Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another X-Plane 11 live stream. I hope everybody is doing well. Thank you very much for taking some time out of your busy schedules to come and hang out with me as we fly some virtual airplanes in the virtual skies. Welcome aboard, everybody. Calvin, good to see you. 12 Cut, welcome. Southwest, good to see you. Papagasha, welcome. Adam1740, good to see you. Leonard Grant II, good to see you. Kane Arthur, good to see you, my friend. Adam1740, got you. Flying FS, welcome aboard, sir. Hope all is well. Midwest Aviator, good to see you. Uh, the Pick, good to see you. The Grinch, good to see you. Spike Flies, welcome back, my friend. The Flying Moose, how are you, my friend? Good to see you. Scott, welcome. Leonard, uh, got Leonard. John Xander Luzano, Good to see you, John. Hope all is well. Ant Aviation, welcome aboard. I hope all is well. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, ben Deke, good to see you. There he is. Southwest 678, that's who I saw. Good to see you, my friend. Welcome aboard. Gary P is here. How are you, man? Boring Pilot Nick, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Ben Muenzer, good to see you. Flying FS, welcome. Geol Geoducey, good to see you. J Job Studios, welcome. Uh, Drinny is here. How are you, Drinny? Good to see you. The Stone 808, good to see you, my friend. Welcome back. Hope all is well. Uh, Zone Muscat, hope all is well with you. Clifton AFM, good to see you. Nicholas Chang, good to see you. Oren, welcome. Kurt Gamer, welcome. Mata Itanak, good to see you. Welcome aboard, everybody. Hope everybody's having a great week. It is Thursday. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Clifton for 10 months. My goodness me. This is Capitan. Huge dough floaties to you, Clifton. Thank you very much for the 10 months of support, man. Absolutely awesome. Thank you so, so much for supporting the channel, dude. Really do appreciate that. Thank you very much for your support, man. I appreciate you over the last 10 months. Incredible. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just going to set that so it's good. There we go. Um, Flight Some Life, good to see you, my friend. How are you? Ready to butter the Dash 8? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We all know what this airplane is like. I was just going to say, I feel like today we have to raise the butter standards uh, I honestly feel after after flying this airplane for the last two or three days, kind of getting myself familiar with it again, uh, it's been months since we've flown it, so a lot of updates have come out. Um, I would say anything under a 200 feet per minute, I would call a butter in this airplane. This airplane is no joke. It is a handful. Uh, when you are flying single pilot, this will make you work more than probably any other airline that I've flown in a, in quite a while. Um, it's it's actually crazy the workload in this aircraft. You will see it firsthand today, uh, watching me fly this thing. I will have my hands full, especially. Uh, you know, the setup, especially the pre-flight, uh, just the way the FMC works, everything about it. It is absolutely crazy. So I'm excited about today. I always love flying the Dash 8. Being that I live in Canada and that the Dash 8s are prominent here, they're everywhere. Almost every Canadian airline, big Canadian airline from Air Canada, WestJet, Porter, uh, they all fly Q400. So uh, the Q400 has been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. I was a a child, five, six years old, getting on a Q400. So um, fond memories of this airplane always will hold fond memories. I actually get to fly on a Q400 uh, coming up next month uh, on my vacation. I fly on a 787 from Vancouver back to Toronto, and then I'm on a Q400 Vancouver from Toronto to um, from Toronto to Ottawa. I'm on a Q400, so Vancouver. should be a lot of fun. Eli, coming in with a new business class membership. Eli, huge no floaties to you, my friend. Thank you very, very much for supporting the channel, dude. I really, really do appreciate that. Thank you so, so much for your support, man. I, I appreciate you becoming a business class member. And to all of our members, thank you so much for support. Flying Moose asks, is a Fly J Sim Q4 XP worth it? Watch the stream today. And you'll have to do a little bit of, I don't want to tell somebody that it's worth it. I, I don't know what your financial situation is like. I have no clue. Um, you know, spending $70, $80 on a payware airplane, that's something that you're going to have to decide. I don't want to be the person. I can show you what this aircraft offers and I can give you an opinion. In my opinion, absolutely. If you're, you know, if you enjoy flying turboprops or you enjoy like that type of flying, this air, this airplane is a must have. It must be in your hangar. It is it's that good. So um, I absolutely love it. Um, hopefully today I can showcase some things with it. And um, <clears throat> you guys will be able to make your decision if you think that it's worth it for you or not. Um, for me, absolutely. I love this airplane. I know it's not quite a fan favorite. It's not as it's not, um, you know, a fan favorite like the A320 or a 737. 
Um, that being said, uh, it is still a lot of fun and an absolute handful to fly. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Today is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Mr. Schmitty is here. Good to see you. Finn, good to see you. Eli, thank you again for your membership, my friend. Welcome to the green team, guys. Let's get some no floaties in chat for Eli, the newest business class member. Uh, thank you very much, Eli. Unfortunately, I can't offer you an upgraded seat today because uh, the Q400s are all economy seats. So for all my members uh, and first class and business class members, I apologize. But uh, at least we can put you towards the front of the airplane, right? So thanks, guys, for support. Boeing yolk or honeycomb? I am using the Boeing yolk today. Uh, always going to be using the Boeing yolk. I'm pretty sure moving forward, except for if we fly general aviation and stuff. But uh, yeah, welcome aboard, everybody. I hope you guys enjoy today's uh, flights. Again, they don't seem like very long flights on paper. You just have to remember that we're in a Q400. Uh, Alaska coming in with support as well. Alaska, thank you very much for support, man. I really do appreciate that. Huge no floaties to you, my friend. Thank you very, very much for supporting the channel, man. That's extremely kind as well. Guys, let's get some love for Alaska. 19 months in first class, absolutely bananas. Huge no floaties to you, Alaska. Thank you very much for the support, man. I truly do appreciate you, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you, man. Uh, the SciTech yoke. Yo, I still have my SciTech yoke. You know what I was thinking about 12 cut? I was thinking about cleaning it all up nicely and maybe doing like a giveaway or something like that. You know, it's not doing any good sitting and collecting dust in my uh, in my closet. So I might as well, I mean, it works. Everything with it works. It's got about 3,000 hours on it. It works though. Everything works. I feel like maybe I should clean it up and, and just do some type of giveaway, send it off to somebody around the world or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out, man. It's It's been sitting there forever. It's probably got half an inch layer of dust on it by now. But um, yeah, I was thinking about doing something like that with the SciTech. I think that would be kind of cool. Anyways, friends, without further ado, let's jump inside the cockpit. Let's get this bad boy program ready to rock and roll. It does take a little bit to get this thing off the ground. Uh, we've got to load the airplane. We've got to refuel the airplane. We've got to set the flight plan up. It's kind of a mess, and you'll see here in a second. So um, it is a lot of fun. Probably in real life, I think this is like definitely top like three of my favorite airplanes ever. Um, just the look of it. It's absolutely gorgeous. And then you add the turboprop sounds and everything that comes with it. Um, such an awesome airplane, not the best airplanes to fly on. They're a little bit loud and the pressurization, um, again, I believe top altitude is 25 or 27,000 feet. Pressurization inside is not the best either. It's a little bit, uh, um, you wouldn't want to be on a long flight. Let's just say that you wouldn't want to be doing a long flight on this airplane. So, um, the flying moose coming with a 20 Danish crone. And thanks so much flying moose. I appreciate you, my friend, huge, no floaties to you, sir. Guys, let's get some love and chat for the flying moose coming in with the love. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you, dude. All right, friends, let's do this without further ado inside the cockpit of the Q400. Uh, let me just make sure that track IR is working good. Okay, cool. Track IR is working. We're all swelling well there. Cool. Let's come down here to the electronic flight bag. First thing is first, we're going to go directly down to the, um, whatever you want to call this, the status payload status page. Uh, we've got the doors open. We're going to connect the GPU. Thank you so much, Flying Moose. Appreciate you, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Rude skipped your very important message. What was your very important message? I apologize, sir. What was that? Let me see here. Uh, what did Schmitty say? Good day, all. Just sent two packages to Canada. Please don't eat all the beef. Oh, you sent them off, Schmitty? Holy macaroni. You're not messing around, are you? Jesus. That was all laid out yesterday. I wasn't expecting that to come up. Oh, baby. We got some jerky and some sauce on the way. Uh-oh. Schmitty. Thank you, my friend. Guys, can we get some no floaties and damn it, Schmitty's in chat? Sending me off another care package. My goodness me, I'm gonna have to stock up. I'm gonna have to stock you up, Schmitty, when you're here. Air Inuit does six hour flights on the Dash 8 300. Wow, could that even fly for six hours? That's insane, man. That's insane. Jared, how are you, my friend? Good to see you. Cucumber Pilot, what's up, man? Good to see you back, dude. Hope all is well. Probably gonna need you today. Uh, haven't flown this airplane in quite a while. So we're probably going to need you, probably going to forget some things, probably going to do some things wrong. Um, I think it's been a couple months since we've flown it. So, uh, okay. Anyways, first thing is first, let's get the airplane powered up, shall we? So we're going to go all the way up top here. We're going to get our master battery switch on. That's going to bring the airplane to life. We're going to get the external power on here as well, as well as the uh, external AC control. That's going to kind of bring the airplane to life. We can start getting some lights on. We can start kind of doing our flows in our system. So right off the bat, I know that uh, I'm going to turn all of the uh, main bat, the augs bat, and the standby bat all to the on position. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to get my position lights on, and Just I'm going to get my logo record, light on. Captain, corned beef and cabbage is disgusting. <laughs> C2A, thanks for support, my friend. Corned beef and cabbage. I don't think I've ever had corned beef and cabbage. Schmitty actually talked me out of getting 
corned beef when we were in California. I was going to get a corned beef and egg. Was it? No, it was a... What was it, Schmidty? It was a corned beef and hash, like something in like a skillet. And Schmidty was like, have you ever had it? And I was like, uh, I haven't. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyways, you talked me out of having it. So I don't know how long it's been since I've had it. Uh, thank you for the support, man. I appreciate you, dude. Huge enough floaties to you, man. Thank you very much, C2A. And we got the Flying Moose coming back up to business class as well. Huge enough floaties to you, man. Thank you very much for your support. Welcome back up to business class. Somebody get that man a nice cool beverage. Thanks for your support, man. Appreciate you, dude. All right, let's come over here. Let's get our research fan to the on position. Let's get our seatbelts. No smoking. And we're going to arm the emergency light as well. Beautiful. And then I'm going to come across here and I'm going to arm the anti-skid, good anti-skid, whatever you want to call it. And let's start getting all of these screens turned on, shall we? We like screens. We need screens in order to see what we're doing. Uh, there we go. Cool. All of those screens will come on. We also have to turn on the FMC on and on. Good. And we need to turn on our radios. So we'll turn those on as well. Uh, wonderful. Love that. I love that the uh, UNS, the FMC, whatever you want to call it, the Universal FMC does this whole little thing. Eli says you should uh, come to the UK one day in real life. That's the plan, Eli. I would love to do that. Um, it's been a... Uh, pff, dude, I'd, I was so young, I don't even remember the last time I was in the... Well, the UK... I was so young, I don't remember the last time I was there. I have a lot of family over there. Uh, my great-grandparents, both sides, were from uh, England. So I've got, some, uh, I've got some heritage and some relatives over there. That would be kind of cool to, uh, to take all that in, man. Maybe one day. Maybe one day, Eli. Thank you for the support, Eli. I truly do appreciate that, man. Huge no floaties to you, sir. Thank you so, so much for supporting the channel, man. I really, really do appreciate that. Thank you, buddy. Hey, Cap, would it be worth it for someone uh, like me who has V-States downloaded to start downloading Hello, new orthos? CPT. How are you? Yes, my favorite airplane, the Q400. Xander, how are you, man? Coming in with the 10 euro. Huge no floaties to you, Xander. Thank you very much for supporting the channel, man. I appreciate you. Absolutely awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. That's extremely uh, kind of you. I really do appreciate that. Thanks so much, man. Is this the FMC similar to the Embraer? Uh, no, this one's a little bit... The Embraer one truly boggles my mind I, I maybe it's because i've never actually sat down and tried to learn the Embraer one um i don't know if they're similar i don't think so the Embraer one is like very counterintuitive in my uh, opinion this one's not too bad it's not too bad so. um luke anyways uh, to do ortho in canada i mean yeah absolutely dude there's no problem with that if you're going to be flying in canada and stuff there's absolutely no uh no issues with that, man. No issues with that at all. Um, okay, cool. So let's go ahead and start loading the airplane. This is the process that takes the longest. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to come over here and we're going to start loading everything up. We're going to get this bad boy ready. Um, if we're looking over here at our sim brief page, we can see that we need... Um, what do we need here? Our zero fuel weight is supposed to be 22226. Jesus, that's kind of interesting. Zero fuel weight, 22226. Okay, there we go. Um... I think we're supposed to have more passengers than that. Let's see. No, 43 passengers is what it's calling for. I guess we're, we're pretty light today. So, okay. Well, that's good. Uh, flight time on route today is going to be 55 minutes. So, we'll zero that out. And 55 in here. Good. And then the total fuel for today's flight, 2394. So, we've got all that. 44 passengers. We've got 934 kilos of cargo. Zero fuel weight, 22 1,226, that's in there. Everything's looking good. Empty weight, good, cool. Toe, 24,620. I'm getting 24,639. Close enough. We're not going to complain about that. Cool. Let's go to the load summary. That's all good. Taxi time, about 10 minutes. Yep, reserve fuel, 30 minutes. That's all good. This all looks fine and dandy. We're actually cruising at 23,000 feet, not 22, but that's fine. Um, cool. We'll confirm the load, and we'll start the loading. Wonderful. There we go. So, You'll start to see that the passengers will be loading. You'll start to see actual passengers starting to sit down in the seats today. Only 44 packs on board today, so it's not even going to take that long. Um, the fuel cart is connecting as well. There's our first passenger. Uh, Rashawn Booth is our first passenger, a 47-year-old male. Cool. Um, let's come down here. Let's start working on the FMC as, again, this is a little bit different. If you're not used to this type of FMC, if you're not used to this style of FMC, it's uh, a little bit funky. It's a little bit weird. So uh, E32NX VNAV is undergoing testing as we speak. Very cool, Fuber. 
Absolutely awesome. All right, cool. So we've got CYVR. We can go to the menu page and we can hit the departure and that's going to let us plan our departure. So we want to plan uh, our departure out of 08 right. So we'll plus number two on the list. We're going to be on the Fraser 7 departure, which is number one on the list. And we have no transition. So we're just going to hit enter. Cool. We go to flight plan. That's going to add some waypoints. You can see here we've got a heading of 083. And then at 1,000 feet, we turn right to a heading of 098. And if we pull open our charts, we can confirm that. If we go to our charts here and we go to Vancouver... And we open these up and we go to standard instrument departure, the Fraser 7, which I should have had pinned. You can see here, 083 heading till 1,000 feet, then a slight right turn to 098 heading uh, and continue on out radar vectors and then we'll go direct Seattle. And that's it. Cool. So that's pretty much exactly uh, what the FMC is drawing here. So that all looks good. So after, um, after our radar vectors, we're going to be going direct to the Seattle VOR. So it's going to be S-E-A-C, nice and easy. We'll accept that. You can see here it will tell us Seattle. So we'll go accept that. Cool, from Seattle, we're jumping to the Buzzo intersection. So we'll get Buzzo in here, B-U-W-Z-O, Z-O, depends where you are in the world and how you pronounce that. A buzzo, and we're gonna accept that. Cool, and then from Buzzo, we're gonna hit the menu page, and we're gonna get arrival, and we're gonna put in our airport. So we're going to KPDX, which is Portland International, uh, and you'll see that pop up here, Portland International. We'll accept that. We're going to plan for runway 10 left today on the arrival with the winds right now. We're going to be on the Crater 2 arrival, which is number 3 on the list. And we're going to take it via the Buzzo intersection, which is number 1. We are going to plan for the ILS 10 left, which is number 2 on the list. And we're going to plan it via Buxom. I'm not quite sure. Let's open this up. We'll take a look. ILS localizer, where's Buxom? Uh, yep, we'll take it from Buxom. So we'll put in number one on there and we'll enter that in. Beautiful. If we go to flight plan, now you'll see after Buzzo, everything should be inserted. So we've got Buzzo, Helens, Crater, Hiker, Voodoo, uh, Doe, Nut, Radar Vectors. Then we can actually move this no link. Uh, radar Vectors to Buxom, which we just checked on our chart. Buxom to Trail, and then we're on the ILS. Um, it shouldn't have this. That's fine. We'll just clear this one out. It's got that double in there, so we'll just delete that. There we go. Buxom, and then we're on the proper ILS. If you ever are concerned, you can always open up your chart, and you can take a look at this. So we've got Helens, Crater, Hiker, Voodoo, Doe, Nut, and then Radar Vectors to Buxom. And then from Buxom, it's going to be Buxom, Trail, Blazer, and Jalag. And you can just confirm that all of that is here. We're just missing Jalag. That's pretty normal sometimes for the FMC to miss that final waypoint. It does this on almost all the airplanes. So, um, okay, cool. That looks good. I'm happy with that. We've got that all set up. That is wonderfully set. We'll bring that back here. Uh, we're going to master exfil from FMS number one. So it's just going to take our entire flight plan and it's going to put it over here onto the second flight plan, as you see here. So we can keep that open like that. Beautiful. Um, cool. I think we're looking good for all of that. Um, back to the overhead. Everything is looking good up here. We don't need to do much. We're still refueling and loading our passengers. So that's good. Um, let's go ahead and start plugging some information in. So if we come back here to our load page, so we've got 44 passengers today. So let's go to our performance tab and we'll go ahead and, uh, wait, is it performance? Uh, or was it fuel? Fuel tab, that's what I need. So uh, passenger weight today, we've got 44 passengers. So we'll plug in this information, 44. We'll enter that and it's gonna be 4620 kilos on the passengers. That's good, or maybe pounds. Um, cargo weight today, we had 900 and, what was it, 934, so 934 on that, beautiful, we'll enter that, and that's going to give us a zero fuel of 23.1, it's given us about 800 over, that's fine, I think it's just because the passenger weight is a little bit different, fuel on board for today's flight, we've got 23.94, 23.94, and we'll insert that, and that's going to give us a gross weight of 25,537. That's it. You can go a little bit crazy, and you can put in your alternates, and you can you can do everything on this. You can pretty much go wild. You can even plan for your, your fuel flow. You can, you can do some pretty cool stuff. I don't go this in-depth with it. You know me. I'm not, oh, my God, let's, you know, go crazy in-depth with that. This Setting up this page here is fine. The fuel page, the cargo, the passengers, our gross weights. At least the airplane knows all of our weights now. Um, cool. Now that that's done, we can essentially go back to the flight plan page, uh, not fuel, sorry, flight plan page, and we can leave that there. And we're 
basically ready to go. Um, we can power on the APU system. It's going to run through its tests. You can see up here that the APU fuel valve is open. So that's good. We can kind of just chill and wait. And now what we can do is let's start running through some of our checklists. So our originating before start checklist. Research fans are on. We got those. External checks have been complete. Alt gear doors. That's done. Flight deck preparations basically complete. And the briefing is complete. You know the briefing. We're Jazz 652. Service from Vancouver down to Portland. Flight time of about 55 minutes. Uh, cruising at flight level 230. 23,000 feet. That's it. There's our pre-flight. We're looking good. Let's go our before start checklist. Circuit breakers have been checked. Passenger signs are uh, on. We've already got them on. Emergency lights are armed. Anti-skid is on. Fuel transfer quantity. We're going to uncheck that because we are loading fuel right now. Emergency brake pressure. That's fine. Power levers are in the disconnect position. Yes, that's good. Uh, I don't know why it's lagging. Sorry. Give me a second. Um, explains just being funny. Um, fuel condition levers are fuel off, yes, and takeoff data has been reviewed. Uh, we can plug this in here. It'll give us some takeoff data, but I'm sure that's going to change as the weights go a little bit. Holy, I think this is Schmitty. Isn't this what it was doing to you yesterday? Something weird going on over here with uh, the FPS. Or wait, no, this is happening in Portland. Um, so we'll leave that like that for now. Uh, and then we can come back here and we can just keep an eye on this. So all passengers are boarded. We're still boarding the cargo, and we're boarding the fuel. Where's the fuel? Total fuel weight? No, we're good on the fuel. We've got the fuel on board, so we're just loading the last of the bags. Oh, it even shows you the bags? Jeez, that's pretty crazy. Pretty intuitive little, uh, little thing down here. Mark dropping the $14 donation. Huge note floaties to you, Mark. Thank you very much for your support, man. I appreciate you, dude. Hey, CPT, you. how are you? I'm doing well, Mark. Thanks for your support, man. I appreciate you. Huge note floaties to you, man. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. That is very, very kind of you. Appreciate the support, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, all right. Looks like we've got some ETC that's come online as well. Vancouver Ground. So we'll come over here. We'll turn these guys on. That all looks good. We'll get these all set up. Wonderful. Um, brightness. Are you guys all the way up? You are all the way up. I want you to be over to FMS 1. There we go. And have you changed at all? Not really. Um, we're going to be doing a Flaps 15 arrival, so we'll flip that guy over. I can basically set everything up right now. Uh, vertical speed. I want to climb at about 2,000 feet per minute initially. That's going to be good. We're also going to be on runway heading. And if you uh, remember, we checked our departure charts so a runway heading of 083 till 1,000 feet. So we'll plug that in now. We'll go 083 on the heading. Swing that guy all the way around. 083, good. We'll plug that in. That's going to be uh, plugged in and selected. So we've got vertical speed and we've got heading mode selected. Good. That is all swell. And then we're going to have our cruise altitude of 23,000 feet. So we'll plug that in here as well. Again, I'm doing this early just because you'll see how big the workload is. And we'll do an out sell. You'll see what the workload is like once we start getting this airplane going. It's There's quite a lot going on. Um, we're just waiting on the rest of the cargo to be loaded. We're almost there. So we're almost boarded. Uh, let's go ahead and tune to ground 121.7. And we'll grab our clearance here quickly into Portland. Negative after you're in a cross runway one three and hold short of zero eight three. <clears throat> Southwest nine eight nine. Yes, Mark. Thanks so much for your support, man. Adding another fourteen dollars onto our monthly total. Thank you so much for your support, man. I appreciate you as always. Cross runway one three. Um, hold short of zero eight right. Eighty seven now. Two eighty seven. Thanks for your support, Mark. I appreciate you, man. 287. Catch it up, dude. Catch it up. Cap, is the Q400 hard on the FPS because I'm hesitating to buy it? Um, I've got my FPS down here. It's a. They've definitely improved it uh, after a release. Release, it was, um, you know, it was, after release, it was a little bit heavy, but I've definitely noticed that the performance is better. Keep in mind that we are facing towards the downtown this is pretty pretty ball in scenery as well. Uh, but we are facing towards the downtown core of Vancouver. If I just turn my camera this way, you'll see that I gain about 15 FPS. Um, the downtown freeware Vancouver scenery that you see right here actually uses quite a bit of resources. So um, looks beautiful. I can't wait. I'm going to be flying into here next month. Actually, like three weeks. So um, yeah, about a month. 
I leave on the 19th, so about a month from now. Um, so yeah, that's what's kind of causing it. But no, I, I find it's really good on FPS now, like a lot better than it was previously. That's for damn sure. Um, all right, V-Speeds went up a little bit, so that's fine. And we'll go ahead and contact ground. Um, we'll grab the ATIS. ATIS is information. Uh, Vancouver ATIS information, Bravo. Vancouver ground, good morning, Jazz 652. With information, Bravo, IFR to Portland, please. She has 62 Vancouver ground, hello, you're cleared to Portland by the Fraser 7 departure, flight plan route, departure runway 08 right, score 5116. Right, cleared to Portland, Fraser 7, departing 08 right, 5116 for Jazz 652. Jazz 652, read back is correct, push to start, is that your discretion, contact me here at taxi. Push starts on us, we'll turn to taxi, thanks Jazz 652. All right, cool. We've got that all set now. Wonderful. Let's come down here. We're just going to set our squat code. Uh, 5116. Hey, we already got it. Cool. We're already looking good. So I'll just bring that guy back, and then I'm going to turn you on. There we go. 5116 is on and reporting. Cool. So uh, I think we're fully loaded now. Are we fully loaded? Uh, we are. Cleared to start. All packs aboard. Bags are loaded, and we're fully fueled. Hey, good news. Let's go upstairs. Let's go ahead and start the APU. Starter switch is on. Hey, Cap, playing x 11 whilst watching your videos. Maybe I shouldn't uh, be using my phone while piloting. Ah, you're fine, man. You're fine, man. Um, it looks so amazing, this plane. It's a lot of fun, Ben. I mean, like I said, it's a handful. It's a handful, and it's, it's, it's quite a lot to take in. But it is just an amazing airplane, man. Like, it is so much fun to fly. So much fun to fly. All right, let's get our gen switch on. You'll see that it leaves the red worn on until you get the external power off. So once we get the external power off, you'll see that it, it immediately switches over to the APU gen. So we're going to get the external power off. We're going to get the AC control, the external power off on that guy as well. All right, cool. Let's come down here. We're ready to go. We're standing. We're loaded. We're, uh, we're ready to rock here, friends. So uh, let's come over here. We'll go transfer fuel quantity and takeoff data has been all set. Before takeoff checklists are complete, uh, next we're going to be the start approved. So master battery switch, main aux, and standby bat. So we've got standby. Uh, so we've got uh, master main bat aux bat and uh standby bat all three are in the on position good that's why you said i do it earlier doors and fueling lights are out that's good apu bleed is off anti-collision light to the red position we'll do that in a second and engines have been cleared to start uh so i come up here uh bleeds are in the off position and in the min so that's good everything's off there um that is all set wonderful and we can go ahead and do our pushback so we'll go to plugins we'll go to better pushback start pushback Down to cockpit Please show me where you and want to go. yeah, we're just gonna go straight back. We're gonna make this as easy as possible. Straight back like that. The cockpit. Is driving up. Cool. Let's come down here and we can just remove the GPU so that it's out of the way. There we go. We are standing on APU, so that's good. Let's come upstairs here. We'll get the red anti-collision light on, and if we jump outside and take a quick little look, see, you'll see that we've got our anti-collision light on red, and we've got our uh, position lights on as well. Hey Cap, any thoughts on the ATR-4272? Never flown it, never flown on it. Never flown it in the real world, and I've never uh, never used it in a simulator. So I'm not quite sure. Just getting payloads boarded, then I will fly to Miami from London. Nice. Good long flight, man. Good long flight. Yeah, I'm not really very smart and stuff when it comes to cold and dark. Uh, LOI definitely wouldn't be able to handle it, but I'd probably just send it. I mean, you gotta follow your checklist, right? That's why the, the checklists okay. are super All intuitive. I believe you can also set Ready. the airplane. Uh, yeah, yeah. so you can set the airplane to be in a turnaround state. So you can do a long turnaround where like you still have to do a lot of the stuff overhead, or you can do a short turn. And a short turnaround basically means the airplane's good to go. You just plug in your FMC and uh, you do your pushback and you do good to go. I like doing the cold and dark just because I know how complex this airplane is and uh, there's, there's probably some people out there like myself when I started flying it that needed some help with it. So, um, yeah. Wing level or heading select? Um, it should be on heading select. There we go. Thank you. Heading select. Uh, Jonique, how are you, my friend? Good to see you. So connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Cool. Let's release our park brake. Starting pushback and you may start engines. All right. Wonderful. So there we have it. We are starting our pushback. We can start firing up those engines. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the overhead. Uh, we're going to get our engine start over to number two. And we're going to start this bad boy up. I'm just going to turn up the sounds here. 
for us just for the engine start we'll turn them down afterwards but for the engine start we want these on and let's go ahead and fire up engine number two enjoy guys looking for 20 percent n2 and we'll start feathering there's 20 percent we'll feather I don't know what's going on with the FPS right now. Don't pay attention to that. It's not part of the airplane. It's actually X-plane being really weird. That wasn't a very nice engine start at 29 FPS. Thanks, X-plane. Lunch spot. Thanks, man. Appreciate you, dude. Thanks for a great stream so far. Hope you have a good weekend. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate you, man. Got Air Canada still Q400. Uh, Air Canada, WestJet, Porter. Yep. There's a bunch of them. Air Inuit still fly them. Yep. Do you think the Dash 8 could make uh, contrails on cruise today flight? Uh, no, we're not going to be up high enough for that. Operation complete. Nope. Go ahead and set the parking brake. All right, let's go ahead and set the park brake down here. Good. Thank you. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. All right, awesome. We've got that. That's all set. Let's go ahead and engine number one. I don't know what's going on with the FPS. It's really weird. X-Plane's taking like I uh, I don't know. It's doing really weird things right now. Why are you... Uh, it's using 100% of my CPU. That's what it is. For whatever reason. It's just going bananas on the CPU usage. Must be loading something. Must be doing something. Um, anyways, I'll keep my eye on it. We should be okay. All right, let's go ahead and fire up engine number one. And again, we're looking for 20% N2. And we'll throw it to the feather. There's 20%. We'll throw it to feather. The is disconnected and bypass bin has been removed. Hand signal on the right. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. At least it's better than Microsoft right now. I mean, smoother maybe. Bought enhanced skyscapes yesterday with Active Sky. When I go to cruise, the clouds uh, loaded. My FPS dropped to sub 20. Might need to stop using enhanced. Uh, ben, are you using OpenGL or Vulcan? If you're using OpenGL, yeah, it's an absolute frame destroyer. If you're not using, if you use Vulcan, it's it's much better actually, much better. All right, external power slash APU is off. Main bus bus tie is off. So uh, external power is off. Yes. Uh, main bus tie to the off position. APU can go generator off and power off. Good. Uh, we'll come back down here. Uh, bleed air one and two on as required. So we'll come upstairs here. Bleed air one and two on as required in the normal position. Good. Um, battery temps check. That's fine. Condition levers to max. So enjoy this one. Uh, this is always my favorite thing to do in this airplane. Condition levers to max. Standby pressure, standby hydraulic pressure. Sorry, I got to turn that down. Otherwise, we're going to go deaf. That'll be good. All right. Standby hydraulic pressure and PTU control will go to the on position. Standby hydraulic pressure and PTU control on. Good. Um, that's all fine. That's good. Elevator trim. Good. Um, that's fine. Flaps are going to be set to five degrees for takeoff. Uh, that's fine. Rudder travel checked. Switch it to steering. Good. Windshield heat and pilot side window heat. Windshield heat on pilot, si pilot side window heat. And we'll get our uh, windshield heat to normal and wipers. That's fine. They don't need to be heated. That's good. Uh, flight to taxi. So we'll bump this down to taxi. Good. And then radar, nav, and comms have been set. PFD, MFD, that's all set. And we need our yaw damper to the on position. Yaw damper comes on. Good. And that is our after start checklist. Next will be the taxi checklist. 
Uh, so we'll get that bad boy going as we uh, do our taxi. We'll do our best to try and get that going. Okay, let's go ahead and request our taxi clearance. This is going to be a handful taxiing in Vancouver. Right, 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 right. I'm just going to turn this down briefly and get my taxi instructions. You, uh, just make sure TRS, that's all right. Just finished loading. Wish me luck. Good luck, man. And Garage has 652 ready to taxi zero eight. Right? Yeah, 652 Just drove 20 minutes. We're still on the ground. Oh yeah. Welcome to flying a Q4. Welcome to fly in the Q4. Just 652, runway 08, right down temperature 3012, taxi Juliet Alpha, Juliet Lima, thrust runway 13, full short 08, right. Alrighty, Alpha, sorry, Juliet Alpha, Juliet Lima, cross 13, hold short 08, right, just 652. All right, and so all aircraft uh, information trailers. What did he give us here? He gave us Juliet, Juliet Alpha to Juliet Lima. Southwest Niner, Niner holding short of runway 08 right. Julia Southwest Lima, Niner, so like this, okay. It's got us going like that, okay. Southwest Niner, Niner, so Juliet Alpha, Hawk, Juliet, monitoring to Lima, Cross, and we're good. Okay, let's go. Sounds are going up. Let's get ready to go deaf. Um, taxi light on, park brakes off, and let's start the taxi. They just like going on over there. Taxi to room zero eight right to the Juliet Alpha Juliet Lima cross one three equal to zero eight right ultimate three zero one two rise nine two eight two. All right, start working on some things down here. Tax lights are on, altimeter. Uh, I just have to reset that. Give me a second here. Conditions, CYVR. Three zero one two on the altimeter. God, this FPS is driving me crazy. I don't know what's causing it. It has to be like, it's only in Vancouver. It has to be something over here. Right, 3012 is set, 3012 in the backup. Good. Um, flight instruments check, tank ox pump one and two and auto feather is on. Tank ox pump one and two with the auto feather on. We're making a left here, he wants us to stay on Juliet. So we're following this all the way around. As soon as we leave, like, as soon as we start heading this way, the FPS just gets so much better. Can it for explain? I don't think it's, I think it's the downtown, I think it's the free downtown scenery that comes with it. That's honestly what I think it is. 
because as soon as we start looking this way, like we just went up 10 FPS. I usually have no problems when I'm flying off stream too. It seems to be only on stream. I don't know why. It like pins the CPU usage. I don't know why. All right, uh, flaps are set and indicated. Trims are set as well. Takeoff warning test, we can do that right now. No horn, which means we're good. We're not missing anything. Okay, we'll spot 5132. Uh, condition levers are max on 1020. Pedo static heat is coming on. So if we go upstairs, pedo static heat standby, one and two on. Good. And ice protection is required. Caution and warning lights have all been off. Flight clearances have been reviewed. Cabin is secured. Taxi checklist is complete. Cool. I've been here in years when you fly in real life. Sim isn't too appealing anymore. Um, I mean, yeah, that's a pretty obvious. I think anybody would agree with you on that one. Weird flex, but okay. <laughs> Weird flex. I don't think anybody's going to deny that flying in a real world sim is a lot better than flying in your home-based simulator. Is the Alaska Dash 8 Q400 call sign Jazz as well? It is Jazz, yes. So, the Q400s are Jazz. If you look on the, the Air Canada Express badging is what it is. You have to read on my EXE app for XP uh, for Vulcan, don't I? Uh, no, I don't think so. You just go into the settings. Go into the settings and put the... Uh, Go into the settings and select the Vulcan. Run explain on Vulcan. Um, we're all good there. We're all good there. No wait, sorry, Chris. Is Alaska's Dash Eight Q Four Hundred call sign Jazz? No, the Alaska Q Fours are Horizon Air. This should be Lima. Or sorry, Juliet. This is Juliet. No, Alaska is uh, Horizon. Simon, thanks for support, man. Appreciate you, dude. Thank you. Horizon Air, beautiful livery too, man. I love the, uh, I love the Alaska Horizon, man. The gorgeous livery. Hey, Gap, good to see you back in the Q400. Any chance you might do Lux Air Ops soon? Yes, I would love to do some Lux Air Ops soon, for sure. Yes. Wrong button. It's so, so loud when you go outside. I don't own this plane, but when I see you fly it, I'd fly the CRJ700 with the Air Canada livery. There you go. That works. Why not, right? Any flights into Aspen, Colorado? We've done Aspen a bunch on the channel. We haven't done Aspen in quite a while, but um, yeah. Hoping to get into the right seat of Dash out of Vancouver this summer? Sweet, dude. That'd be absolutely awesome. All the best on that, man. Do I set my x wing graphics to max? No. No, I don't run any of my simulators on max. Hey Gap, I enjoy watching uh, you sim away. No stress if things go wrong. All right, sweet cucumber. Thanks, man. Sunny, good to see you, man. Welcome back. Hope all is well. Ranger, good to see you. Prince Aviation, thanks for your subscription, my friend. Appreciate that. Dash Rad, yes, sir. I agree, man. Special airplane. For sure. We want to make a right on Lima, which is going to be right here. We've been cleared to cross 1-3, and then we're holding short. We're catching up on missed uh, work since uh, you were out last week with COVID. Oh, hope you're feeling okay, man. Running your sim at max could be the weirdest. Yeah, well, it's, yeah. I don't think any simulator is meant to be run at max either, man. Is this equal to the Majestic Q400? Uh, Harold, I've never owned the Majestic, so I can't really tell you. Um, I don't I don't really know. I don't know which one would be better. I don't know what offers more 
as far as realism, system depth, etc. I'm not quite sure which one does it. Just a lingering cough now? Got you. Feel better soon, eh? What's the best X-111 scenery for Newark? There isn't really any good ones, Flash Mini. Um, the Derzeki design, probably, but I, it's not even that good. I don't know. Newark needs a, a big facelift, in my opinion, in the sim. We don't really have a lot of good scenery. v states take so long? It does. I mean, when you think it's like 60, 70 gigs, right? So, wish there was a proper Saab 2000. There's, uh, the, which Saab is out? The Saab 340 uh, by uh, LES Less Saab is pretty good, I've heard. I own the, um, I forget which Saab I own. I think I own the, uh, I forget what the company's called. GD New York is ugly. Uh, also, perf in New York in general is rough. Actually, wasn't too bad when we flew in. Um, flew in there not not too long in the uh, level up. It's okay performance. But yes, the scenery is very, you know, could use some work. Yeah, this is like normal FPS that I get with the airplane now, like up in the 50s. Um, there's something back there that's... Resources are going crazy, you know. Off-topic question, do you have scenery for the Cape, for example, NASA? I don't think so, no. off top out, thanks for the great stream. Ben, take care, man. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Hope you left us with a like, dude. It seems a lot more realistic than Majestic. Yes, definitely. Hey, Cap, what's up? Just got back from walking my dog, John. What's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Welcome. Hope all is well. All right, we want uh, Lima 4, which is coming up here. That's what we're going to get. Um, if we're going to get our lineup, that's going to be set. Bleed Air 1 and 2, that's fine. I forgot to get that up. Cucumber Pilot, if you're still here, um, one thing that I can't remember, do you put it in 850 when you get to cruise? RPMs at 850? They do do that, don't they? That was a pretty long taxi? Yeah, that's the longest taxi we could have done in Vancouver. Definitely. Because we're going from the international side to, uh, to zero weight, right? Yeah, what's the best freeware airport scenery? Oh man, there's so many good freewares, dude. I don't even know. Zero dollar payware, absolutely amazing. Uh, there's so many, man. There's so many. Just go to the X-Plane org forum, so that'd be the best bet. Roger, S652, hold short zero, right? Thanks for ATC. We'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Alrighty, over to Unicom 122.8, looking good. Landing lights are coming on. Strobe lights on. Wing lights on. Newer traffic, Jazz 622, departing 08 right to Vancouver. Let's look out this way, make sure we don't have anybody coming in on final. We don't. Good, cool, all swell and well. Um, let's come down here. We'll make sure bleed air one and two in the uh, min position. Good. Uh, we need transponder TCAS is on, flight controls checker free, flight size taxi, and okay. landing lights on. I'm going to bring this to flight. Good. Alrighty, friends. We're ready to rock it out of here. Who remembers this airplane? Oh, she's about to get loud. She's about to get heavy. Let's do this, friends. Joystick cam is on. Um, hold on. I don't like that it's showing the top banner. We don't like that. Where's X-Plane? X-Plane? There we go. Yeah, there we go. That looks a little bit better. Alright, cool. Um... Let's get it into flight mode. Takeoff power is set. Chrono is on. Nose down pressure. Let's do it, friends. Takeoff power set. Airspeed's rising. She goes quick. 80 knots for neutral. V1. Rotate. Positive rate. Gears going up. Wants to go flying. Back over traffic horizon, 
All right, remember at a thousand feet, we're making a right turn to zero nine eight. There's a thousand feet, we'll make the right turn zero nine eight. There's 180 knots, we'll go flaps clean. And we'll set our climb prop in. Climb power's in. And now we're gonna set IS mode. 210 knots on the climb. There we go. Pitch for climb. And we're off. Uh, we can bring the wipers to that position, make it a little bit less loud. Taxi light can come off, wing light can come off. So we'll come down here. We'll do our after takeoff checklist. Landing gear is up, flaps are clean, climb power is set, bleed air one and two to the normal position. Good. Uh, I am going to turn on the autopilot and send us direct here. Give me two seconds. Let's come down here. We've got that torque. Uh, we'll go direct two, and we want Seattle number two. We'll enter that. We'll go to nav track and autopilot on. That will go ahead and turn the aircraft. I'll bring you back up into the flight deck. All right. As, I can, as you can see, a very hands-on airplane. There's a lot going on. A lot going on. It makes it really hard to fly this as a single pilot. Standby hydraulic pressure and PTU control to the off position and tank ox pump one and two and auto feather off. So off, off, good. And these are in the normal position. There we go. Um, engine temps and pressure, that's all checked and fine. Ice protection as required. Cabin pressure and temp controls, that's all set. And passenger signs, leave those on to at least 10,000 feet. After takeoff checklist is complete. We're looking good, we're climbing 210 knots. Climbing at about 3,000 feet per minute actually. A little bit over torquing on that, so I'm just going to bring that back here just a little bit. Bring it back to right about there. Flight high should be good right about there. Um, and there we go. That should be good. Uh, all of our checklists are complete. We're climbing up. Next step's going to be 10,000. We can bump this out. We are direct to the Seattle VOR. We've got 200, uh, sorry, 200, uh, 23,000 feet in out cell L nav and IAS hold at 210. We're looking good. Want to spread the word about this amazing video, so I also tweeted the link to the vid. Is that okay? Sure, man. Of course. Of course. Cool. So there we go. Q400 magic. Uh, a lot going on in this airplane, but also a lot of fun. Like I try and tell people all the time, um, don't don't buy this airplane expecting that your first, your first or second flight is going to go like amazing, no problems. It, this is a handful to fly. I'm honestly surprised that I did that well. We didn't forget anything. We pretty much did everything the way that we should. Um, but yeah, just remember that this airplane is an absolute handful. So, is it just me or is the sound cutting out every split second for every two to five seconds? Uh, I don't know. I haven't heard anybody else mention any sound issues. I was watching the broadcast 10 minutes late. I've just realized if you answered my question, I didn't hear. So can you repeat it for me again? Uh, Arda, what was your question? I, I, I don't think I got it. I'm pretty sure I missed it. My apologies. Is the Jar Design 330 any good? Nah, it's okay. Get it on sale if you do want to get it. Hey Gap, why are you always wearing sunglasses? I've never seen you without sunglasses. The same reason that I'm wearing a fake pilot uniform, man. It's part of the, you know, part of the gig. Part of the gig. That looks oddly familiar. Right there. Huh. That's the big mall, Schmitty. There's the, uh, the thing. It's going to be cool. What clouds do I use? Enhanced skyscapes. You can put exclamation point clouds in chat. Oh, we're above, well above 10,000, so let's get those on. Uh, we're in some clouds. I learned this last time, so I should have my engine intakes on, and I should have the, um, the props on as well, I'm pretty sure. I know that the engine intakes go on. when we're going through the clouds. Cucumber Pilot taught me that.
I think, right? Hopefully I learned. Still climbing nicely. 2,400 feet per minute, up to 15,000 feet now. I really want to see you without sunglasses. Is it okay for you? I'm very curious about that. Uh, go to my Instagram, man. There's a bunch of pictures up there with, without me and my sunglasses on. Hey, Gap, how did you learn to fly these planes like in real life? Uh, was it YouTube, every stream, uh, another model? Um, yeah, man, just watching other people fly them, watching other streamers. Um, you have to remember, I was a huge... I used to watch a ton of streams before I started streaming, so... That's all correct for the ice protection? Hey, good stuff. Why is OBS... Weird stuff going on right now, man. OBS is struggling big time. Weird stuff going on. I wonder if it's the airplane. What's my Instagram? You can put an exclamation point insta in chat. That should pop it up. I wonder if it's the airplane causing that. Andrew, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Welcome aboard. Gotta go by. Just wanted to stop by for a little bit. John, thanks for stopping by, man. I appreciate you, dude. Thank you, thank you. What cloud mod do I use? It's um, Enhanced Skyscapes! Exclamation point clouds in chat. Uh, we're just through 18,000 feet, so we can go standard barometric pressure. The standard barometric pressure here, too. Maybe OBS trying to tell you it's the weekend? Yeah, maybe. Um, actually, I wanted to speak about some things. C2A! Hey, Captain. Hey. Why are you wearing sunglasses? And your pilot shirt has another pair of sunglasses in the pocket. Yes, Don't back up. Don't forget to set your wheels out and turn your flaps on for landing in PDX. <laughs> Thank you for the support, man. I appreciate you as always, C2A. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you for your support, man. Appreciate you, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How do you land at night with sunglasses? Professional. Just a professional. That's how. Thanks for support, C2A. I appreciate you, man. Huge no floaties to you, dude. Thank you, thank you. Who's smoking in the cockpit? Nobody yet. Yeah, keyword yet. Gap, is the RTX 3060 Ti good for Microsoft Flight Simulator? Should be, yep. What are our possible chances of a crash for this hard flight? Uh, crashing the airplane? No, we're not going to crash the airplane. We just may not get that, you know, that greasy butter that we're so used to. Um, anyways, speaking about this weekend, guys, um, I've got some stuff going on. Uh, I cannot, I can't speak about it. I'm sorry, I wish I could speak about it. I can't speak about it, but I don't think that there's going to be streams this weekend. Um, I'm going to leave it open for you guys to speculate whatever you think it may be. I can't say anything again, I promise. I, I wish I could, but um, I will make it up for you guys next week um, in a big way in a big way in a big big way so this weekend I'm not sure about the streams I will um, I will get back to you guys on it but as this weekend I would not plan for um, I wouldn't plan for any streams at least on Saturday Sunday um, again I would love to speak about it uh, unfortunately I can't speak about it so uh, I've signed an NDA that is not allowing me to speak about it I hope you all understand that um, it's not it, it, I'll just put it this way it has to do with work okay it's not like I'm taking off the weekend and I'm I'm going to party and ha 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 it has to do with the simulators it has to do with work um, so yeah I'll just leave it at that all right so we'll leave it at that um, I promise that next week uh, after the weekend hopefully I will be able to, uh, to uh, you know, talk about it and we'll be able to, to, to do a bunch of stuff moving forward. So, I hope you guys understand. Thank you for understanding. It's obviously, I, I don't want to take the weekend off of streaming, but I think it's important that um, something like this gets done. So, um, all right. 
So now we're RPM to cruise 850. And we'll bring our torque back here to about, I don't know, what was it, 65? 65 65-ish, I think, is good. 63 or 65 on the torque, we'll say. It should be good. PMDG for an X-Bane 12 early uh, beta. Like I said, you guys can speculate all you want. I can't talk about it, guys, unfortunately. Uh, we can speculate. We can we can joke around. We can think. We can say what we think it is. Uh, but obviously, I can't. Spe I can't. I can't. You know, fully divulge what we're doing yet. Uh, but I, I promise you, it'll be worth it. Let me just leave it at that. Okay. I promise it'll be worth it. Um, VNAV. Let's set up our VNAV here, so you can see that uh, I'm actually really impressed with this. I've tested this out a couple times now. Uh, the VNAV is really nice. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set uh, a nice descent rate, 1,800 feet per minute. No, no worries on the descent rate. Um, so you can see that our top of descent is in 117 miles and or 21 minutes. So that is perfect. We'll leave that like that. All swell there. And beautiful. On our way. What's better, x 11 or Microsoft 2020? Which one should you buy? Really depends, man. Really, really depends. Really depends. All right, let's turn the sounds down here a little bit so we don't all go deaf. God, I love this airplane. Look at how nice that looks. Incredible. Incredible. All right, camera's going off for a little bit. We're going to do a quick little stretch here. Uh, is the timer for the round trip or time just for the arrived target? Uh, that's an that's an ETA. So estimated, or that's, sorry, that's an ETE, estimated time on route. So it's pretty much just going to count down until we get to, to Portland. Uh, I have those kind of sunglasses, but my uh, are very special because they go with my reading glasses, but I wish I knew what brand they were, but they're very nice. I have Ray-Bans. I don't know what yours are. Yeah. <coughs> Both in the morning, PMDG, and at night, x 12. There you go, man. Speculate, speculate. Hello, just got a question. Any news on the INI 310 for Microsoft Flight Simulator? Not yet, Francisco. Hopefully soon, man. Uh, I also would like to point out, I don't know if you guys have seen the little advert that pops out from this side of the screen, but um, we do have a new sponsor on the channel. Um, so a huge shout out to INI Builds for sponsoring the channel. INI has partnered with my channel uh, over the next year to bring you guys exclusive content, exclusive giveaways, um, all kinds of cool stuff. So a big, big shout out to INI Builds for sponsoring the channel for the next year. Shout out to them. Um, guys, if you, if you don't know, I mean, I don't know what world you're living in, but INI Builds basically setting the standard, in my opinion, for airplanes and sceneries and stuff. Uh, doing both sims. We've got the E300. We've got the A300 by um, I and I builds here in x -Plane. We've got the 310. Uh, we've got the 310 coming for um, Microsoft Flight Simulator as well. So super excited about that. They just released London Heathrow for Microsoft Flight Simulator, as well as a plethora of other sceneries here in x -Plane. Um, so super stoked to have them on board. I love working with companies um, that just make my job really easy by just putting out some of the best content, you know? So... I will soon become a member. Sounds good, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. Don't forget the Beluga. Yes, that's right. The Beluga. One we haven't flown in a while. Maybe we'll have to dig out the Beluga again. Did you switch it to Vulcan, Ben? CHLM, how are you, my friend? Good to see you back, dude. I hope you're having a great, uh, great afternoon. And no worries, Ben. Glad I could help out, man. You should get the Jar Design 330 or wait for X-Plane 12. I would wait for X-Plane 12, uh, unless Jar Design has some crazy sale, but yeah. Does CPT mean captain? It does, yes. If 
Oxlade Sierra, what's up, man? Good to see you. How are you? Thanks for stopping by. Chief Simpile, what's up, my friend? Good to see you as well. We're having a great Thursday, my friend. You think there's a good triple seven out there um pmdg triple seven yeah pmdg triple seven for sure um goes off we're not flying in the clouds anymore FYI, Voodoo Donuts is a shop in Portland. Is that what it's called? Is that why the Waypoint's called after that? That's pretty cool. Uh, it might not be stretching this week, but I wanted to say good luck on your secret mission. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate you, man. Uh, just talked to my first controller on Vatsim last night. Is there any trick to comprehending what they say fast, faster? I feel like I'm too slow and compared to them. I mean, that's just normal. That's very, very normal. Captain T-Rex. Uh, um, I, I would just, you know, just write it down, man. Have a pen and a paper. Write it down. Even if you're slower than them, you're completely fine. How do you know all of this stuff? Like, operate a whole aircraft from zero. Uh, practice, man. Practice makes perfect. Once you... Once you kind of understand how aircrafts work and, and how the systems work, they're not really all that different from one another, right? I mean, sure, the cockpit may look completely different between an Airbus and a Boeing, but guess what? They're both airplanes, and, like, the, the fundamentals and the... You know, it's all the same, right? So I feel like once you learn a handful of airplanes, flying different airplanes becomes a lot easier. I think Chad will agree with me. Voodoo Donuts in Portland? Damn. Is this multiplayer? This is multiplayer, yes. We're on the VATSIM network. You can put exclamation point V-A-T-S-I-M in chat. Yeah, is there a reason not to set X-Plane graphics to max? Um, yes, it's that just your computer. It's better to have performance than eye candy, in my opinion. Which I and I builds plane would uh, you recommend the most? Probably the A300, Landon. Um, the A300 is still operating today uh, in many, many scenarios. A lot of cargo planes, UPS, FedEx, and around the world fly the A300. Um, the 310 is almost gone. There's not really a lot of airplanes flying around, so I'm I'm the type of person that I really prefer flying. When I fly airplanes, like I, I like to I like to do real world routes. I like to fly, you know, as if they would in the real world. So, yeah. Vishath, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. How are you? Yep, there is going to be a cargo version, um, Chris. Because there's actually quite a few 737s that are being um, converted over. The I, &I EGGL is amazing. It is. Yeah, beautiful scenery, Ben. Remember, guys, if you haven't done so, don't forget to smash down that thumbs up button. Really do appreciate all the support today. Everybody tuning in, watching the streams.
Why not Microsoft Flight Simulator today? Because we were in it last week. I like to use both of my simulators. Can't just fly an A320 around all the time. You find the Q400 the rest of the week. Uh, actually, Vitas, this week's going to be a little bit weird, man. Um, I, as it stands right now, there's not going to be a stream on Saturday, Sunday. We're probably going to be live Monday and the rest of the week. But as it stands right now, there's going to be no streams this weekend. Um, I'm going to be doing some stuff in, in the simulator that, unfortunately, I can't speak about. Um, but yeah. Hopefully by early next week, we'll be back in the sim, man, and I'll be able to uh, to share what I've been working on. Uh, from 1 to 10, where would you put the FlyJ Sim Q400? If you're a turboprop fan and you're a Q400 fan, a 10. Uh, if you're somebody that's not used to this, and, and, you know, I could see you maybe not scoring at that, but if you like the Q400 and you're a fan of turboprops and that stuff, it's a 10 out of 10 all day. All day. Do you hear of the horrible Dash 8 accident uh, when a wheel collapsed during the blade from the prop flew into the window of the aircraft? Nope, didn't hear about that. Halfway done my long haul to KSAN, because that's the best airport, uh, to uh, fog with my new Hawaii ortho. Nice, enjoy, man. Are you using the Hawaiian ortho photo project? I think that's the best ortho in my opinion. Uh, we are Thursday, Visheth. So stream today, but there's going to be no stream on Saturday, Sunday. Most likely, as it stands right now. That may change, like I said. That may change, but as it stands now, no stream Saturday, Sunday. I will do my best to kind of update with what's going on, and I'll share as much as I'm allowed to share. But... C2A. Just to remind you, Captain, it is a federal crime to tamper with the smoke detectors in the lavatory. <laughs> this guy, man. Huge dope floaties to you, dude. Thank you very, very much for supporting the channel, man. I really, truly do appreciate you, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate that, man. Ooh. Vo oh, I've, I've seen this, Schmitty. Yeah, yeah, the Voodoo Donuts. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen this on... Somebody did a show of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen this. Don't people, like, people line up, like, around the block for this, don't they? Yeah. Ooh, the Portland cream? Mmm, that looks good. Mmm. That looks real good. Huge no floaties to you, C2A. Thank you very much for support, man. Appreciate you, buddy, as always. Federal crimes. I didn't know what Dash 8 I could park at Jetways, but we'll see park at stands. Yeah, they could do Jetways. Yep. Yeah, I saw that, Spitty. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll write that down. Thank you, thank you. Favorite airport to land at with low cloud ceiling? Uh, I don't know. Uh, any airport, really, to be honest with you? Yeah. A lot of us are guilty of that while on the sim. <laughs> yep. Have you gotten in touch with the Mad Dog guys yet? Seems a lot of Microsoft Flight Simulator MD80 streams. Uh, I have not. No. No. I have not. Top of the sense in 40 miles. Looking good. Best airport in the US? Oh man. I don't know guys, you can't do that to me. Like, best how? How are we describing what's best? You know what I mean? Like, it's such a, it's such an open-ended such an open-ended subject to go, okay, well, what is best? Ooh, that looks nice. 
define best? Like, what has the best approach? What has the best airport? What is the best arrival? You know, like it's there's too many. There's there's also way too many airports in the states that are absolutely awesome. You know, like the Arnav Runway 31 into LaGuardia, one of my favorite approaches. River Visual, River Visual 19 into into DCA. Again, top top five, top ten approaches. There's so many, man. Um, you know, the the Newark Arnavs, amazing, gorgeous. Um, so many, man. So many. Flying into Key West. We haven't flown into Key West in forever. Key West, man. Any thoughts on X and Viral? I wonder why you never use it on your streams. It's awful in performance, man. Not only is it awful on performance, Canada Airliner, I personally don't think it looks good. I think this looks way better. I think they know that they look similar, but I'm just not a fan of how X and Viral looks at a lot of angles, man. X and Viral looks okay when you're on the ground looking up. Anytime else, it kind of looks like shit. And that's just my opinion. And then not, you have to add the fact that it runs like absolute garbage. Um, so, I don't, uh, yeah. There's no way I could stream that and uh, get a smooth experience with it. It just wouldn't work. It just wouldn't work. Benny, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. How are you? I think x is better for the US and P3D, maybe for EU. Depends. Really depends. Change the username for good reason. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate you. What do you guys think of that new, uh, the new uh, ad right here? Look at that. That's nice. Thrustmaster TCA Quadrant Boeing Edition. Boom. Hashtag ad. Looking real nice. Your favorite Dash 8 livery is the Air Berlin. It's a nice one, for sure. Everybody knows that Pocatello Regional Airport is the best. <laughs> AJ, what's up, man? Super Sonic Jellybean, how are you, dude? Good to see you. Uh, exams again this week, but I'm all done now. How you doing out in Canada? Good, man. I'm doing well. Cap, what auto brake setting do I use for runway 20? What's OGG? I don't even know what OGG is. And what airplane are you in? Airbus? Boeing? Hey Gap, I updated the E321X today and now it's gone from my hangar. What am I missing? Uh, I have no clue. Maybe delete it out of your community folder and do a fresh install. That might work. Enhanced Skyscape has broken precipitation though. Ever flown in Enhanced Skyscapes with the rain? I mean, yeah. I mean, listen, dude. x weather is just garbage in general, Canada Airliner. You're never going to get x weather. Like, even using X and Viro. Like, it's just... You're never going to get it to be truly x weather. The weather system within x is its biggest flaw. Um, that's just a known fact. So um, hopefully with x 12 coming, coming soon, um, it should be, uh, you know, it should, um, it should fix all those issues and we shouldn't need any, you know, lazy third party attempt at it in my opinion, but we'll see. We'll see. Oh, fog in Maui? Oh, you'll be fine with one. One or two. What does squawk mean? Squawk is a code that the air traffic controllers give you to... That's how they recognize your plane on their on their screens. That's how it's done. All right, we are 15 miles from our descent. Let's start getting some information in here, shall we, while we're sitting here chit-chatting. Um, so... I believe that the weather is still a good for go. 10 left. Winds are 120 at 5 knots. Yes, perfect. So, um, we're going to expect 10 left. So, let's plug in some information. So, 111.3. So, we've got 111.3 already plugged in there. That's perfect. And then we can actually hit the format page. And we can flip this over. And now we can go ahead and set our front course of 103. So that it's ready to go. 103, we'll get this in here. 103. There we go. That guy's ready to go. Cool. I just saw our V path come alive. 
which means that we're probably ready for our descent, or we're getting there very soon. So if we come down here to our FMC, we click the message page, it says top of descent alert, thank you. Top of descent is coming up in eight and a half miles, less than one minute. So let's go ahead and reset our altitude here. Uh, we're gonna take a quick look at the chart. I believe it's 5,000. I'm gonna set 5,000 for now. We'll go ahead and alt cell, and then I'm gonna select VNAV. And you should see a little path come up here. VNAV in white. Once the VNAV actually engages, I believe it turns green. Um, don't hold me to that though, but you can see here that the VNAV is on. That's what we're looking for. And there's the VNAV path. So once this starts to slowly make its way down, if you have VNAV selected, the airplane will follow the VNAV pathing and should take you down to the runway. Um, if we open up our chart here, we see that we need to be at uh, Buxom for 3,000. That's good, but on the crater too, what is Nut? We have Nut at 5,000 feet. Voodoo and Nut at 5,000. So, good call. 5,000 feet is what we're going to initially descend to. That's all good. Look at those views out there, though. Absolutely beautiful. We should have clouds. I don't know why there are no clouds, but that's fine. Uh, Susses don't have T-Castles as well, but you can still fly them. True. Yeah. What ortho source is this for this sector? Um, this is... I believe this is V-States. Yeah, this is V-States... Um, v State Seattle. Does he do V State Seattle, I think? Yes. I don't know. I think that's if that's not V States, it's just regular ortho for XP. But I'm pretty sure it's V States. What a short flight. Yeah, it's only three hundred miles, man, but because we're in the Q4, this plane doesn't go very fast, right? So Alright, let's start pulling back the power now a little bit. We'll look for about twenty percent torque. And that should keep our speed just around the same. 15, 20% torque should keep our speed roughly around the same. Our descent has started. I've actually really noticed that the descent, um, it works really well now. It was a little bit, little bit janky when the airplane first came out. But it's very smooth now, very fluid. You see we started our descent, no problems. gonna do a weather refresh here because I don't think it's loaded correctly. Does the default tuner in X-Plane 11 need more improvement or is X-Plane 12 or its weather engine? Does the default... I don't understand that question, simple takeoff. Does default scenery in X-Plane 11 need more of an improvement for 12 or is it a... or its weather engine? Why would the scenery... I'm not quite sure I understand the question. Sorry. Very weird question, but what do you use for extracting compressed folders? Um, what do I use? It's not that weird of a question. Um, WinZip? Yeah, WinZip. x ray weather is not uh, at all perfect because they have most of the bug problems, but you can't go wrong with that, right? I mean, x ray weather is awful. It's atrocious. WinRAR, yeah, something like that. Or those looking crisp, it is beautiful. Is that Helen's right there? That's Helen's, isn't it? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to calculate how long it would take to fly from London to Sydney in a Q400. Oh man, days, days. Um, yeah, Hamza, that's that's kind of an issue with it right now. There's they believe that there's a memory leak somewhere. All right, altimeter in Portland is three zero one eight. So we'll set that now three zero one eight. Good. We'll set it up in our backup three zero one eight. Good. Um, 
that is all set. That's looking good. We'll set our uh, approach speeds. So you want to aim for about in the middle of that. So about 126 on the approach speed is what we're looking for today on that one. And our minimums today, if we actually look at our charts here and we open up our ILS, we're going to be on the ILS. So the minimums are going to be 263. So we'll put 260 or 265. Two sixty-five. So minimums. I don't see Helen's up close. Do I do a flyby? Sure, we gotta turn the sounds up though. Descending into Portland. Speaking of which, that's all fine and that's all set. So we're in our descent checklist now. Altimeters have been set. Approach and landing briefing has been completed. We're expecting 10 left. We've got the frequencies all plugged in. That looks good. Ice protection on is required. That's all fine. Um, all right. Next is approach checklist. Altimeters have been set. Lights will do this at 10,000. We'll finish that uh, coming through 10,000 feet. Look at that, man. Stunning. Remember, under 200 feet per minute. That's what we're aiming for. Ah, yeah, there you go. Good job, X-Plane. <laughs> That's the cloud that we were looking for. Three layers of clouds. Just got into the air on my flight from Miami. Enjoyment. Have fun. Kappa, one terabyte SSD 3060 RTX. Would it handle orthos for short to medium haul flights or is a second hard drive a must? Um, simple takeoffs. You're not going to get a lot of ortho on a one terabyte, my friend, unfortunately, dude. Um, and you really don't want to fill that up with ortho. I would suggest your cheapest option, simple takeoffs, get yourself like a two terabyte external SSD or something for like, you know, two, three hundred bucks. Um, store all of your ortho on there. Make sure that it's connected either through a USB-C or through a um, uh, USB 3.0. Or get Mark's up like and not have to worry about ortho. I mean, true, yeah. Right out. What's up, man? Good to see you, dude. How are you? Thanks for stopping by. I got a four terabyte hard drive. Would it work with ortho? Yes. Absolutely. All right, speed's good. We're under 250. We're coming up on 11,000 feet. Cucumber, what do you guys, like, there's no way for you to tell, like, how hard you land the airplane, right? Like, other than just, like, oh, shit, that was a hard landing because you actually feel it. Like, there's nothing that gives you, like, landing rates or Gs, or is there a G calculator? Can you see what your landing G was? Because I know that that's more, that's more the number in the real world, the landing Gs. That's more the number that's used. Not so much the foot per minute. The foot per minute is like, um, you know, it's how the simulator world judges their landings, right?
Alright, there's 10,000 feet. Landing lights can come on as well as the wing lights. Do you like this plane or the CRJ better? They're both great planes. Really depends. Cap, I just got a master warning three minutes into my flight. Should I turn back? You can do whatever you'd like to do, my friend. If I don't bounce or slide off the end of the runway, I class it as a butter. <laughs> nice. The only G indicator that we have would be the ELT. I don't even know what the ELT is, but okay. So you don't really have anything that, you know. Am I going to butter today? I don't know. I don't know. Emergency locator transmitter goes off like uh, five something G's. Okay, got you. We don't want that going off. Not at all. <laughs> that would not be good. All right, we're going to pause the music. We can't really hear much anyways. Kind of a loud airplane in case you haven't noticed. Pretty loud airplane, but we like loud. Always makes for the approaches fun. Flying this airplane is a lot of fun as well. All right, so we need to be at 5,000 for Donut, and then we're going to make the left turn and descend to 3,000 for Buxom. That is the plan. Just gonna watch the speed. It's getting into the red. I always try and keep my best forward speed in this airplane because I know that there are jets that fly on these routes as well. So if I keep my speed up around 240 knots, we can keep up with the jets. That's always, um, always fun. All right, welcome back. Little nice stretch on cruise. Are you going to vector yourself in? Yes. After donut, we're going to make a left turn, descend to 3000 and, uh, yes, get ourselves in. We've got 5,000 feet, alt cell. We're on the VNAV path. We're on LNAV, so that's perfect. There's the horn that lets us know we're 1,000 feet. And I'll turn the sounds up here a little bit. Fully immersed in our arrival. Beautiful visuals out there. Why aren't you a pilot IRL? Uh, money, man very expensive to become a pilot in Canada. Very expensive. Like, very expensive. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Our data team has access to the quick access recorder that has info like landing rates, etc., but nothing to tell us instantly apart from the back calling up and saying, that hurt. Got you. Got you. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen very often. Pushing back uh, in KDAL on my way to Phoenix and level up 73700 Southwest. Nice. Enjoy, dude. That's going to be a fun flight. Enjoy that one. All right. Alt cell is in. We're going to keep our speed up. I don't think there's a speed restriction. We'll check the charts. Um, creator 2. Do we have a speed restriction? 210 knots. We'll bring our speed back down to 210 knots. We're just passing that now. So we'll get 210 in. Making beautiful left turns over the countryside. Right, there's 210, we'll get our power back in. All right, so lights, GPWS flaps are selected, 15 fuel transfer is off, tank ox pump one and two, and stand standby hydraulic pressure and PTU control are coming on, 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 and on, good. Um, that is all set. I've got pressure. Good. Passenger signs are on. Caution and warning lights. I don't believe we have any in our cabin. Is secure in the back. Next is going to be our landing checklist. Uh, again, we have no lights on the enunciator, so we're looking good there. Cool. So um, let's start going down to 3,000 feet. 
So we'll plug in 3,000, we'll alt cell, we'll go vertical speed, and we'll descend at about 1,000 feet per minute. And we'll pull the power back so we keep our speed at about 210 knots. And what we can do now is we can uh, sync up our heading. Not even sync it up, we just need to go on a 90 degree left turn, so we'll do that. We'll go 90 degree left turn, heading of uh, 185, we'll call it. So we'll go on that heading and now. We'll flip our nav source over to ILS-1. Good. Puts us on 15 miles. I'm going to shallow out the descent rate here a little bit to about 500 feet per minute. And we'll just vector ourselves in. Slight left turn. Course heading is 103, 111.3, and we can just confirm on all of this again. So 111.3 with 103 on the course heading. You can see our vector in here. Will be nice. Shallow this out even more. 200 feet per minute should be fine. See, it looks like Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you look closely, I mean, it's an ortho, right? I mean, that's what Microsoft Flight Sim is, is ortho imagery. All right, wonderful. I'm now going to keep that turn rolling to Buxom. And then from Buxom, we're going to intercept our runway. So I'm going to put us on a heading of, uh, put us on 140. Make a nice 45 degree intercept or 40 degree intercept. Love doing VOR approaches. <coughs> I can't say I do a lot of VOR approaches here on the channel, to be honest with you, but. All right, what are we looking here? 14 miles out now. That looks good. We'll get that descent rate going back down here to about 500 feet per minute just to keep ourselves up with the ILS. You can see we've got it in here. So all is swell, looking good. And what we'll do now is we will arm our approach. And you can see we've got Lokestar coming in now. Perfect time to get that bad boy ready. And we've got Glide Slope here in white. So once the Glide Slope actually becomes active, we'll be able to, uh, the Glide Slope will turn green like it did at the Loke. There we go. How's this puppy behaving? Uh, absolutely perfect. This flight has been absolutely perfect. Could not have asked for a better, uh, a better go at it. It's uh, going perfect, man. We're not on the ground yet, though. So fingers crossed that we can get this bad boy down on the ground. Um, so again, next is our landing checklist. That's the only thing that we've got left. Uh, I'm going to go flaps 5 degrees. Going to start slowing us down up to about 180 knots. We're at about 11 miles now. So I want 180 knots. Glide slope is about to be captured. As soon as we grab our glide slope, I'll be able to throw the gear down. Yep, which do you think I should get? MS-2020 or X-Plane 11? I wouldn't get X-Plane 11 right now with X-Plane 12 around the corner. I would wait. I would wait. There's our glide slope when you see that it turns green. So the aircraft is now on glide slope. We are approximately nine miles out, nine and a half miles. And somebody explained to me the difference between RNAV and ILS approach. RNAV is radial navigation, so you're flying waypoints in. Well, there are certain waypoints, waypoints and altitudes that you have to hit. And ILS is a frequency a radio frequency that guides the airplane down. That's pretty much the easiest way that I can do it. Our nav approaches are actually getting really cool in the States too. They're getting really eight and a half miles, guys. Let's go gear down. Um, our navs are getting really cool. We'll go flaps 10. Don't worry, that's the horn just because the gear hadn't gone down completely yet. And let's start setting ourselves up here. Um, again, flying this airplane, it's a little bit different. I like to get myself set up a little bit beforehand. It's very pitchy. Um, I don't know if Cucumber, can you, can you, uh, I feel like the airplane becomes like, you have to really get it trimmed properly once you start bringing your speed backs and getting, so, uh, there's 160, so let's go flaps 15 degrees, which will be our landing flaps. Again, under 200 feet per minute, guys, that's what we're aiming for. Um, really hard to get a butter in this airplane. I'm not saying that we won't get a butter, but it's, it's a hard thing to do. Hard thing to get a butter in this airplane. Uh, all right, let's get our props full forward here at 1020. We'll come down here. Gear is down, flaps are set, condition levers are set 1020, and we need bleed air one and two over to the min position. That's good. Speed will bring that back down now. We're at about a five and a half mile final, so good that we're a little bit getting configured now. I want my speed at about 127, 128 knots though.
But the speed settle should have around 15 to 20 percent torque. All right, cool. There's uh, there's 127 right now. Got about 22 percent torque. All right, I'm gonna turn the sounds all the way up. Enjoy the arrival, friends. Catch you guys down on the ground. See you there. Joystick cams on. Let's go ahead and autopilot off my airplane. All right, wonderful. Landing checklist, gears down, three green flaps are 15 and indicated. Ground spoilers have been armed. Cabin crews advised. You guys are advised. Let's go ahead and butter. Well, let's go ahead and get this bad boy down on the ground. Let's not talk about butters. Let's not get a little over overzealous in ourselves here. This is a handful of an airplane to put down on the ground, let me tell you. A handful of an airplane. I thoroughly enjoy flying it, but it is... I think I enjoy flying it because it actually gives me a challenge. It's not an easy airplane to fly. Very much pitch and power control is what you're looking for here. So if you start losing, you know, you start losing your pitch, you add power. It's very sensitive that way. Eight, exactly. That's why it's called the Crash Eight. Slam her into that ground. CHLM. Let's go land this plane. How about that? Let's go. Thanks for support, CHLM. Appreciate you, my friend. Huge no floaties to you, sir. Thank you very much for the continued support, my man. I really appreciate that. A little bit high. Minimums. Could have done much better, friends. I don't think we could have done much better. Great. Very happy with that. Very happy with that. Like I said, under 200 feet per minute. That's what we're going for, man. Very happy with that one. Beautiful. We'll vacate the runway here to the right. And I think we got a short little taxi today. I don't think we're going very far. All right. Wonderful. Taking our first right here. Stop our clock. 54 and a half minutes on the flight time. Wonderful. Cool. Let's do our after landing checklists. Um, control lock is on. Transponder standby radar and flaps clean. Tank ox pump one and two off. Yaw damper off. Um, spoiler in flight over to taxi. Good. Red anti-collision light to red. Good. Um, pedo static switches off. Windshield heat off. Window heat off. So, window heat off. Off. 
off. Get the master warning, that's fine. Uh, ice protection on is required. Main bus tie tied. So main bus tie tied. Uh, APU and bleed air one and two normal as required. So we'll go upstairs. Bleed air one and two normal as required. And we'll spool up the APU. Let it run through its systems. Sweet. Sound package on this aircraft is fantastic. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. 10 out of 10. This airplane is a 10 out of 10. Like I said, it's it's a special airplane for sure. For sure. If you sound pack for the Q400, these standard sounds that come with the aircraft. These are the standard sounds, man. Yeah. What do you use to steer on the ground? Just my rudder pedals, man. Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. Great job. Uh, you've got to keep on that throttle till the end. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't... So that, that was the cucumber. I didn't really cut it. I kind of... I just... Because I had it too far advanced, I kind of pulled it back. But I think I pulled it back a little bit too much. I think if I would have kept it in a little bit more, we would have had a one or two second float and probably buttered it. But, um, yeah. No, absolutely. I agree. Passion Aviation. Hello, my friend. Good to see you. All right. We're looking for... Uh, I think five. Gate five. I don't know. These gates are really weird. They don't look like this in Portland. I believe that they're actual, like, little stand things. So, um, landing lights, taxi light, Echo 10, Echo 9, Echo 8. I don't think that's where we wanted to go. Might have been, but... I think they go right here. Echo 7. It looks like they t they taxi themselves out though. There's no pushback. Or do they turn before? There's no way they turn like that. There's no way. Or is there? Not with trucks parked that like that. I'm just gonna go like this. Do I use a streaming PC? I don't. No, everything's off off one PC, man. All right, park brakes coming on. Good. Head upstairs. Start the APU. Give that a second to run through its systems. We can start feathering the engines. Engines are feathering. APU gens online. Engine two. Not gonna ever how much you were wrestling with that yoke the entire way down. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of uh, the winds were kind of blowing us a little bit all over the place. I don't, I'm not sure what was going on with the winds there. Yeah, what's feathering? Um, it basically, I don't know the proper way, Fred. Um, but you're keeping the air, you're keeping the, the engine, the, the, with like, without the turbines, like there's no turbine I think on, I'm not quite sure though, that's not a proper, it's not proper by any means, uh, of, of what you're doing, but <laughs> I think that's essentially what it is, is you're keeping the engine on without the actual, like, um, without the turbine spinning. Last time I was in PDX, Air Canada was using gates Charlie 1 to Charlie 3. Yeah, they're probably doing different with COVID and stuff, but if you actually go on Flight Radar 2-4, um, this is where the, the flights have been parking. So, minimizes aerodynamic drag with the propeller. There you go. Last time I was in PDX... Oh, sorry, I read that one. <coughs> Does a great bother landing. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right, there we go. Beautiful aircraft has... 
stopped. And what we'll do is we'll just do this real quick. We'll come over here and we'll do a fast unload. There we go. So all the passengers are unloaded. We don't have to wait for that. We can get right to watching the replay. So let's come up here. Let's go to toggle replay. We'll back this sucker up. We'll take a look at that arrival into Portland a little bit further. That should be good. A little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer. There we go. Uh, we can get rid of you. That's good. We'll come over here. We'll go shift three. That's not the closest runway, but no problem. We'll go shift three again. There we go. So here we are coming in. Used to work on the Q4, did a lot of Calgary Edmonton turns. Sweet, very cool, man. Very cool. Nice little flare. Keep it in the flare, keep it in the flare. Down and in. I think that that's right, right at that last little second is where I kind of started easing back the power. That's probably where I should have kept it in. We would have floated definitely another second or two, but I feel like it might have been a little bit more of a smooth landing. But again, at 170 feet per minute, I'm I'm taking that all day long in this airplane. This airplane is not easy to land. Um, it it not that it flies funky. It just it's 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 a weird because of the high wing. It's a little bit weird in how you have to fly it. But I'm super happy with that landing. Super 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 happy with that landing. I think it was a lot of fun. Uh, flying this airplane is just so much damn fun, man. I mean, look at it, the visually of the airplane as well. Oof, just gorgeous, man. Absolutely gorgeous. We'll do some wing views here in a sec. We'll watch the tower view here. Long runway, plenty of time to flare. True, yeah. Yeah, very long runway. Just chat will give me shit if I, if I float for over 10 seconds. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> There's the thousand footers. Boom. Right on the 2500s. Nice aerodynamic braking, held that nose for quite a while. Held it, held it, held it, held it, held it, just using that aerodynamic braking. Nice and smooth, perfect on that center line. Gorgeous landing. Gorgeous landing, my friends. Absolutely wonderful. Let's watch some, uh, let's watch some wing views. Should be awesome. The wing views are my favorite views. This view coming in over like this. I absolutely love the landing gear um, set up in this aircraft as well. It's quite beautiful. Explains replay system is brilliant. I mean, it works, right? It, it does what it's exactly what it's supposed to do. That's the beauty of the Explain replay system. Dream virtual flight. What's up, my friend? All the way from Italy. Good to see you. Hope all is well, man. Thanks for stopping by. Nice and smooth. No messing about. No floating about. We like it, friends. We like it. Felt really good, too. Landing felt really good. Watch, I'm, I'm going to be flying on a Q400 in a month, and I'm going to record my landing. And I promise you, you'll see how you'll see how chunky they are. Should do a stream together with XP72. He needs uh, someone to butter his landings. Oh boy, <laughs> simmer down, simmer down now. You said it, not me. You said it. Hey Cap, how are the SSG ERG jets? Are they good? No, stay away. Stay away from anything SSG does. It's not good. <laughs> not good. Stay away. Sa save yourself some money, man. Save yourself some money. Just look up what feathering means. It says uh, the varied angle of the prop blade. There you go. Uh, do you live near the Canada-USA border? I was told that most Canadians live near the border. Uh, I'm about an hour, an hour and 20 minutes away from the border. Not far, but you're correct. A lot of major Canadian cities are very close to the border. Yeah. 
When I was little, I used to think that turboprop engines were safer than turbofans. What, really? Very similar. Mike Elf X-Ray. Seven months. Holy dude. Seven months? Something has glitched. I'm on my 11th month. Uh, well, whatever. As always, thank you. It does say 11 months. I'm not sure why. That's weird. 11 months. Thank you for the support, Mike. I appreciate you, man. Huge enough floaties to you. Maybe YouTube's having one of those one of those glitch, glitchy moments. Huge enough floaties to you, Mike. Thanks for your support, man. I appreciate you, dude, as always. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, guys, I'm going to rewind this to about... Uh, I don't know. We'll go right about there. That should be good. You guys can watch the approach from here. It's quite beautiful. You guys can watch the approach. I'm going to get set up for our second leg. We're flying back into Vancouver. I'm also going to have some salad real quickly. So enjoy the replays, and I'll catch you guys all in about uh, five or ten minutes. Enjoy, friends.
matters.
All right, and my friends, welcome back inside the simulator. Hopefully that break didn't take too long. I'm gonna do the return flight now is Jazz 651, service from Portland into Vancouver. Uh, should be a fun flight if you just missed it. I was showing what the uh, what the weather radar looks like in Vancouver right now. Not fun, so we're definitely gonna be getting some rain into Vancouver. But without further ado, let's jump inside the cockpit. We'll get this bad boy ready to rock and roll. Mr. Schmitty, <coughs> 37 months. Holy macaroni. Says member for three years and three days. Confirmed in perks. YouTube is glitched today. Honestly, how can this stuff happen with a big company like YouTube and Google? Oh man, because it's YouTube and Google. <laughs> Huge stuff floaties to you, Schmitty. Thank you very much for support, my friend. 37 months. Absolutely wild. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Schmitty. I really do appreciate that. Extremely kind of you. Huge no floaties to you, sir. Thank you very much for supporting the channel, man. That is absolutely kind of you. Really, truly do appreciate it, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the support, Schmitty. Appreciate you. All right, let's do it, friends. Let's jump inside the pit. Let's get this bad boy programmed, ready to rock and roll. First thing is first, we're coming back down here. We're going to connect the GPU. We're going to go to the overhead. Let's start getting the master battery switch on. We'll get the main bat, aux bat, and standby bat on. We'll get the external power AC control and the external power on. You'll see that the aircraft comes to life. Beautiful. Let's get some brightness up on these guys. Great. Before we do anything else, let's come down here and let's start loading the airplane. So we're going to go to select load. Beautiful. Today on Simbrief, saying that we need a zero fuel weight of 25043. So we're going to go zero fuel weight 25043, and we're going to insert that. Good. If I scroll down here, it says that we've got 77 passengers on board today. That all looks good. Wonderful. Cargo weight, that's all good. Uh, flight time on route today was 56 minutes. So we'll zero that out and we'll put five, six in here. Good. Um, and then fuel for today's flight. We need 2402 on the fuel. Beautiful. That is all completely done. We'll go to the load summary and we'll go ahead and confirm the load and we'll start the loading. Cool. Aircraft is starting to load. That is wonderful. Let's start working on the rest of our systems and get the aircraft programmed ready to go. Friends, so let's get all of our screens turned on here. Good. Uh, we'll get these guys turned on as well, on and on. Beautiful self-test in progress. And we will get our FMCs online as well. Beautiful. Cool. Got to have been here so long, and thanks for the friendship and the hours of great fun. Absolutely, Smitty. Couldn't have said it better myself, man. Couldn't have said it better myself. I, uh, it's, um, you know, people don't know, right? So, it's, you know, people don't know how much we fly together and how much time we spend together, so... Uh, you're right. It is a pleasure. I appreciate our friendship very much, man. Thank you, honestly, for, for all of the support, man. It's, it's uh, incredible that it's been three years. That boggles my mind alone. So, yeah. I took way too long? What do you mean? No, I didn't. Wasn't long at all. Um, all right. We'll accept that. We'll accept that. Beautiful. Let's go over to the flight plan page and PDX. Go to the menu page. We're going to hit the depart page. Uh, we're planning a departure out of 10 left, which we arrived on. So that's beautiful. We'll select two. We're going to be on the Portland 2 departure, which is number five on the list. We'll select that. No transition. And we'll insert that. Beautiful. Let's go to our flight plan page. It's basically radar vectors. Wonderful. From there, we're going to be jumping on uh, the Battleground VOR. So we're going to go direct to BTG. Battleground BTG. Good. We'll insert that. Wonderful. From Battlegrounds, we're going to jump on an airway. We're going to go to menu. Uh, wait, I don't know. It wasn't. It was weird. It wasn't doing this for me the other day. I think I have to go to list. Wait, I think I click on this and then I have to go to list and I have to go airways. Nope, that's not right. Uh, list. Uh, nope. Nope. Hmm. Let's see, it says airways here, but it's a gap. I don't even know what's going on. So we're just not even going to do it. I was having issues because it wasn't getting me the, uh, it wasn't getting me the, um, the plan, uh, when I was doing this yesterday and it's obviously me doing something wrong. Um, cause if I go to, l so we need to go direct to BTG, which is battlegrounds. We'll enter that. We'll accept that. And then if I go to battlegrounds and I go to list, it should pull up airways here, um, which it doesn't. I'm not sure why, what I'm doing. 
probably there. Uh, airways? Nope. Anyways, we're not going to worry about it. I've uh, clearly not done something right. Unless Cucumber is here and he can uh, point me in the right direction. It wasn't finding it the other day. Googly Otters, what's up, my friend? Um, I tried it before. It works in real life. Uh... High list, then list airways. Yeah, it's weird. Second button on the right side. That's what I thought. You are correct. In real uh, life, that's how we do it. Yeah, okay. So, BTG. So, Battlegrounds, BTG. And then we enter that in, and we accept that. And then if I go here, or do I have to go to, like, here, and then go list? And then airways. Ah, that's why. Okay. That was... I'm doing it wrong. Okay. So now we take Juliet 1, which is number 1 in the list. We enter that. And then we're taking that to the Seattle VOR. So we need to find Seattle in here. So we see Seattle's number 10 on the list. So we'll select 10 and we'll enter that. There we go. That was my fault. I was doing it wrong. I wasn't selecting the one down. I was actually selecting Battleground, which is why I was screwing it all up. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So then from Seattle... Uh, we're going direct to the Payne VOR, P-A-E, P-A-E. Good, we'll enter that in there, we'll accept that. And then from Payne, we're going to jump on our arrival, so we'll go to Menu, we'll go to Arrive, and we're going to put in CYVR, which is Vancouver, and we're going to punch that in. We are planning for it, Vancouver International, correct. We are planning for 8 right on the arrival today, so number 2 on the list, and we're going to be on the Grizz 7 arrival, which is number 4. Uh, and we want it via PAE, number two on the list. And we're going to expect the ILS uh, Delta. Sure, ILS eight right, so number one on the list. Enter that, and we're not taking it via Tav P, so we'll just select Enter. Beautiful. We'll go to Flight Plan. We'll scroll through here. We'll make sure we don't have any crazy discontinuities. There's one. We'll delete that. Good. And then we've got the ILS into here, and we'll just go Previous. We'll make sure NACMA radar vectors to Booville, Taf, Taf P, and down and in. Cool. That all looks good. I'm happy with all of that. Wonderful. Let's go over to the uh, electronic flight bag. Make sure that they are loading. They are loading. Passengers are loading. We've got five minutes. We're fueled. I think we're fueled up. So we are fueled up. So that looks good. Um, everything is set here. I'm happy with all of that. We're all good on that one. Let's go to the uh, performance tab. No, the fuel page. Sorry. We're going to plug in some information here. So, passengers today, we've got 77 passengers. So, we'll populate that. 77, we'll insert that. It's going to be 8,000 pounds. Good cargo, we've got... Let's go ahead and go to the back position. Cargo says we've got 1028 on the cargo. So, 1028. Plug that in there. Good. Um, that gives us a zero fuel of 26.7. Again, this number is a little bit higher. We're not 26.7. We're... 2503, which I'm not quite sure, but that's fine. Uh, fuel on board, we've got 2402 as well. We'll plug that in. Good. Gives us a gross weight. Wonderful. Cool. Everything's good with that. I'm happy with that. I'll go back to my flight plan page. Wonderful. Let's go to our checklist page. Um, originating before start checklist. So let's start working on some things. Let's get the recirc fans on. Good. Um, let's get the external checks completed. Yes, that's done. That's done. And briefing, we are Jazz 651 service from Portland to Vancouver. Estimated flight time, 56 minutes of a flight level of 240. Briefing is complete. Good. Before start checklist, circuit breakers are done. Passenger signs, we'll get all of this on now. So passenger signs on, no smoking to the on position. Arm our emergency exits and we'll get our um, anti-skid, anti-skid on. Good. That's all done. On, armed. And on good fuel transfer quantity, we're going to wait. We actually, we're not. We're, re, we're done refueling. That's done. Power levers are disc. Fuel conditions are uh, fuel off condition levers. And takeoff data, we're just going to wait on that guy because we need to be fully loaded for that to happen. Um, cool. So let's set up our autopilot panel here. We're going to be um, nav selection. We're going to put in FMS 1 good uh, cruise altitude. We're just going to get that in today. 24,000 feet. We'll plug that in. Good. Initial climb is going to be on a vertical speed of about 2,000 feet per minute. That's the initial climb rate that I'm going to be looking for. Um, and we're going to be on a heading mode. And we're going to be on runway heading, which is 103. Good. Um, cool. And we'll do alt cell. Good. Vertical speed, 2,000. 24,000 is in. 
uh, heading select as we need to go a direct to. Cool. I'm happy with all of that. Take off data. Again, we're just waiting on that. We're waiting on this guy to finish loading. We can keep our eyes on there. We're pretty much good to go. Um, we can come upstairs. We'll get the power start switch on the APU. Get him ready to go. I'm not going to spool it up quite yet unless they've got the back doors closed. Now, they do have the back doors closed, so that's fine. We can... Uh, we're just waiting on passengers, so we can spool up the... Well, we're not going to spool it up quite yet. Better to wait, Captain. Better to wait. The button clicks. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they are satisfying. That's for damn sure. They are. They are. They are. Uh, I just left Vancouver bound for Dallas and can confirm it's raining. <laughs> nice, Jordan. Yeah, not, not the nicest weather today in Vancouver. Hopefully, I don't get any of that. Hey, Cap, just ordered my PC. Um... Already own FS2020. Is X Plane 11 still a great buy now, or should I wait for X Plane 12? I'd wait for X Plane 12, Michael. That's my honest opinion. Um, X Plane 12 is going to be out sooner than later. I would just wait for that. I don't think it's worth getting invested in getting all set up in X Plane 11 for X Plane 12 to come out in the, in the near future. I would expect we're going to see X Plane 12 within the next four to six months, was my guess. Three to six months, probably being realistic. Three months, uh, maybe more three to four months, you know what I mean? Somewhere around there. Yeah, I would just hold off, dude. How about the MD-11? Hopefully soon, man. Hopefully soon, dude. Hopefully soon, my amigo. I'm uh, fingers crossed. We've got a lot of good things coming. A lot of good things coming. We've got some things coming for x 11. We've got some things coming for Microsoft Flight Sim. It's uh, honestly going to be a crazy summer, I think, as far as like simulator-wise. It's pretty wild, man. Microsoft Flight Sim or x for a beginner? Uh, for a beginner, probably Microsoft Flight Sim. Um, I find it's probably a little bit user-friendly as far as like the lessons and everything that you can get going with that. Uh, we're almost boarded. Cool. Let's pull up that AP. We'll hit the start button. Can actually hear it because the door's open. So stoked for the PMG G73. Yes, as am I, man. It's going to be an awesome airplane. I'm excited, dude. Excited, excited for sure. Um, all right, we've got seven more passengers. So we got a pretty full airplane today, to be honest with you. I think we may be fully loaded at 77 passengers. Hey, Cap, looking for a new airplane on a budget. Would you recommend either the current 777 by Flight Factor or the Magnite 787? Ugh. Man, honestly, if I'm being honest with you, Cap, just save your money, dude. Save your money, man, because there's going to be some good stuff coming soon. You've got the MD-11 from Rotate, like, could be coming any week, any month. Um, you've got the 787 from Flight Factor. You've just got a lot of stuff going on right now. I really wouldn't... It's really hard to suggest either of those airplanes because I just don't feel like you get your money's worth. That's just me being honest, man. Um, you know, if you're going to choose one, I'm going to leave that up to you uh, for what you would like. So, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest it, man. You hear what's up, dude? Welcome back. Um, all right, we're clear to start. All passengers are boarded. Bags are loaded and we're fueled. We're just going to wait till that says standing. But that's all good. Let's go to the overhead. We'll get our... Uh, APU generator on. We'll get the external power to the off position. Everything looks good. We're all set there. Uh, let's do our takeoff briefing. We'll set our takeoff speeds. 127, 127, 131. That's all set. We'll come down here. We'll disconnect the GPU. We're good to go here. We're cleared to start. All packs on board. Everything's good. I think they're just removing everything right now. Um, that should change and let us know that standing. I think it says standing state is what we want, but we're pretty much good to go. So let's go to plugins. We'll go to better pushback. We'll go to start Ground pushback. To cockpit. Please show um, me where you want to go. Now, actually, I guess there is no pushback, right? Do we just start? I think we just start and turn. All right, let's just do that then. Never mind. Exit. We're just going to start and turn, I guess, then. That's uh, pretty much what uh, I think they do here. So let's go to the overhead. Um... 
we could have just we didn't even need the APU. We could have just gone and feathered engine number two, and we would have been fine. Um, okay, so let's come down here then. Let's do our checklist very quickly. Uh, takeoff data has been removed. We're looking good. Startup is approved. So battery master, main, aux, and standby bat all to the on position, which they are good. Um, Doors and fueling lights are out. APU bleed is off. Anti-collision light to red. And engines have been cleared for start, which I believe we have. Um, cool. So that looks good. So we'll just come upstairs here. We'll get this on the red. Good. And we'll go engine number two. And we will start engine number two. Come down here. You can hear it starting. We are looking for 20% before we introduce feather. There's 20%. Start to feather. There's that beautiful engine. Game with Che, what's up man? Good to see you back dude, how are you? Alright, good feather on engine number two. And let's go ahead and feather number one to start and looking for 20% and two before we feather introduce fuel there's 20% we'll fuel cockpit looks like plastic <clears throat> in the Q4 we introduce fuel right away as soon as NH rises no need to wait for the classic 15%. Oh, got you. Okay, there you go. Very cool. I've noticed in this airplane, like, even if you introduce it, it really doesn't do anything until the 15%. So maybe that's why you just intro and, and then you kind of just set it and forget it type of deal. All right, cool. Two good starts. Um, external power and APU can come off. That's fine. Main bus tie off. So APU generator and APU to the off position. Main bus tie is off. Uh, bleed air one and two is on as required. Normal and on as required. Good. Um, battery temps are fine. Condition levers set to max. So we'll put those guys up now. Enjoy the sounds. Beautiful. Um, standby hydraulic pressure and PTU controls are going on. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Elevator travel. Good. Uh, that's all fine. Flaps are set. Five degrees for takeoff. That's good. Rudder travel. Good. Switch nose to steering on. Windshield heat and pilot side window heat on. So windshield heat and pilot heat on. Wiper heat can stay off. Windshield heat can go to normal. Um, flight to taxi. We'll do that and yaw damper on. So flight to taxi, yaw damper. All right, and we're pretty much good to taxi here, friends. So that will complete our after start checklist. Next will be our taxi checklist. So that's good. Let's go ahead and turn ourselves out of here. Get the nose light on. Good. Park brakes off. Um, hold on, I probably want to squawk 2000 as well. No ATC, so we'll squawk 2000. On and reporting. Cool. Park brakes off. Let's turn this bad boy around. There's no ATC online. I have no clue if this is how they do it, but it seems like it. All right, we're going to 10 left, which is all the way down there. So if we open up our charts and have a little bit of a look-see, um, we need to re-actually do this.
Okay. Probably should have done this before trying to taxi. It makes my life a lot harder trying to do this while taxiing, but that's okay. All right, cool. We got extra Biscoff cookies on board, of course. He got you go to the J-pad in the settings uh, for rudder. Mine are kind of weird. Um, for the rudder, you want it set to steering axis. Yaw is what you want. That'll allow you to move it pretty freely and properly. Turbo props like the Q400 make me appreciate the sheer size of airports and the sims around me while I fly. Uh, I like the feeling a lot. You're, you're, I agree. I agree. Small little biz jets, man. No, we're having it in Vancouver, Slim. There's something in Vancouver. There's something in Vancouver that causes the FPS to drop. If you have a little look-see here, you want to take it on Echo, so the next right. Missing these planes flying into Eugene, yeah, that'd be fun. Alright. Should have done some things here. We're just gonna make sure that I've got all of this on. So from our checklist, tax light altimeters. Oh shit, did I even set altimeters? Hold on, we may have to hold short here for a sec. No, we got altimeters set, 3018. That's all good. Um Tank ox pump one and two and auto feather is on. Tank ox pump one and two and auto feather is on. Um, flaps are set, trim set, takeoff warning test. Good, no horn, we're all set. Condition levers are max, pedo static heat on, ice protection, good. Cabin crews advised, good. Line up, uh, bleed air one and two to the min position, good. Anti-collision lights, white transponder is on. Flight controls, good. Uh, flight slash taxi up into flight. Good. And landing taxi light on and off. We'll turn it off for now. That's fine. Um, cool. Let's do it, friends. Ready to rock and roll. checklist will be the after takeoff checklist. All right, sweet guys, enjoy the departure. Catch you guys on the other side. All right, let's do it. Flight rating checked. Chrono's on. Let's go. Airspeed's alive. 80 knots, we're neutral. V1, rotate. 
Oh, we are so much heavier than we were flying in. Pause the brake, gear up. up here a little bit we can't make that left turn out immediately we got to gain about 3,000 feet before we make left turn all right 180 we're going clean on the flaps bring our climb power in as well give me a sec climb power is coming in get some up trim in climb for about 210 knots we'll go IAS 210 bring that nose down there's 3,000 feet autopilots going on and then we're going to come down here and we're going to go direct two. And we're going to send that to battlegrounds number two on the list. And we're going to come upstairs here and we're going to select nav. And LNAV should kick in with a left turn. And I'll bring you guys back up into the flight deck. All right, sweet. And there you have it. Another successful departure of the Q400. <clears throat> a lot of work. A lot of work flying this airplane, man. XL290, nobody knows what you're talking about, man. At this point, you're just spamming chat, so please stop. There's nobody on final. I have the VATSIM charts open here. VATSIM maps. There's nobody on final. There's nobody holding short. And I really don't care what's going on in the real world when I'm flying in the simulator. I'm sorry. All right, we're direct battlegrounds. 210 on the speed. We're going to hold that throughout the climb. We've got IS, LNAV, and Alt Cell on on flight level 240. All is good, friends. Successful departure. Very nice. Very, very nice. Lucas, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Welcome, welcome. I'm doing well, Yehi. How are you? Remember, guys, if you haven't done so, don't forget to smash down that thumbs up. I'm trying to hit 300 likes on today's video. Hopefully, we can uh, we can reach our goal of 300 likes. So, if you haven't done so, please do me a huge solid. Don't forget to smash down that thumbs up button. Uh, I love the live streams, bud. Hans, thanks so much, man. Glad you're enjoying the live streams. Thank you. Appreciate that. Good to hear you here. Yeah? Good to hear. All right, nice climb out. Forgot I had this aircraft in my hangar. Definitely uh, got to get back to it. Oh, absolutely, man. Handful to fly, but man, oh man, oh man, is she fun. Very fun to fly. Doctor's orders, fly by and stretch. Hey, gotta tell me twice. God, I love the Air Canada livery on this jet. It's so good. Air Canada Express, man, oh man, oh man. How often do I participate in VATSIM events? It depends, Niels. Depends, man. Depends on the timing. Depends on the location. There's a lot that goes into it, right? All right, 10,000 feet. Landing lights off. Looking good. I don't think I got those on. Yep, that's off. Cool. Sweet. Continuing the climb. See, it looks great. Thank you, Ronald. Glad you're joining me, man. 
hopefully we actually get the weather to stay here the whole time properly. Definitely heavier than when we departed out of uh, out of Vancouver, so it should be a fun arrival. Across the pond, yep, I did the last cross the pond. We flew Toronto to Munich, I think is where we went. Toronto to Berlin, sorry, that's where we went, yeah. CYYZ to EBBR in the tallest 340 is where we went. When are you flying in real life as a passenger? Um, next month, April. Mid-April, I'm, I'm going on vacation. Working on my airport in Minecraft. Just finished my 777, so I'm doing the jet bridge. Sweet. Very cool, man. Enjoy. What planes are you flying on Saturday? Uh, as it stands right now, there's going to be no stream on Saturday, Sunday, unfortunately. I'm uh, going to be working on some stuff um, that I can't speak about right now. I've signed an NDA, but um, yeah. Are we going to see a trip report for your IRL flights in April? A trip report on the YouTube channel? Probably not. You'll have to pay attention to my Instagram. I do want to do a couple YouTube shorts while I'm gone. I want to try those out. The YouTube shorts are between like 30 seconds and a minute. So I might I might upload some YouTube shorts. We'll, t we'll test it out. We'll try it out. We'll see how it goes. And, um, yeah, maybe we can try some of that stuff out. Maybe a, a YouTube short of my departure or something like that, you know? I simply chose to overhaul the entirety of my public transport network in cities and skylines uh, on a city with over 130,000 sims. I wish I'd flown along with you instead. Uh, mistakes were made. Oh, man. Yep. Yep. I don't even touch it. <laughs> so that, game's, that game's a lot, man. It's uh, it's a great game, but it's also uh, it's a handful sometimes. It is a handful. You're flying Palma de Mallorca, 13th of April. Very cool. I insist on some waivers before I am photographed slash filmed uh, for those shorts during the vacation. Of course. Arthur, how are you, my friend? Good to see you, dude. Welcome aboard. I hope all's well. Good to see you, man. I think we're coming up on transition altitude, 18,000 feet. So we'll get that ready here in a sec. Do some A300 cargo ops, so satisfying to watch. Great plane by I and I. It is Daniel. Yeah, we're gonna fly in that sooner than later, for sure, man. For sure, for sure. I uh, didn't do the landing after landing. A little bit of uh, mistakes were made. It's okay. Um, these all need to come off, 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 off. It's all good. Cool. Cruise checklist. We can actually... Re uh, I'm not going to release the passengers quite yet. We've got some clouds up here in front of us that may cause some issues. Good to hear, Arthur. Good to hear, man. What's the smallest aircraft you've flown on IRL? Like commercial airplane or just smallest airplane in general? Smallest airplane, probably a DA-20. DA-20 and the DA-40. Those are probably the smallest out of all of them, but yeah. In 2020, I was meant to fly from Heathrow to San Jose. Unfortunately, COVID ended our holiday plans. Damn, that sucks. That sucks, Falcon. Smallest commercial plane that I've ever been on? Probably a... I don't even know. Probably a Beechcraft 19D. Like... Probably Beechcraft 19D back in the day when Air Canada used to fly them. Jazz used to operate the 19D from like Montreal to Ottawa in like the early 90s. Uh, maybe late 90s. I don't even remember when that was. Christian, what's up, my friend? Good to see you. How are you? Thanks for stopping by. How 
Hazza, how are you, my friend? Good to see you. Welcome back. What livery should I do for my 777? Emirates or Qatar? I love the Emirates, to be honest with you. Smallest plane you've been on was a 320? Damn. Holy. What's going on with the hours there, Schmitty? You're behind. You're getting behind. Coming up on flight level 210. We're going up to 24. Not going to be cruising for very long. It is St. Patrick's Day. You're correct. Oh, boy. And there goes the wonderful, wonderful world of X-Plane. Just like that, flying in clouds to flying in absolutely nothing. Thanks, X-Plane. Appreciate you. Well, we'll take this advantage to uh, look at some beautiful mountains that we passed by here. Explains lack of weather is our... Uh, yeah. Missed a couple streams, so I fell in the second place. <laughs> no worries, you're fine. I was joking. I was joking. St. Helens again. Which one is that? Is that Mount Baker? Is that what that one is? All right, we're coming up on cruise. We're going to get our uh, stretching material ready. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you and to all my fellow Irish. Is it an Irish holiday or is it a world holiday? Worldwide thing. Here, it's an excuse to just drink a bunch of beer. Like you need to give Canadians an excuse to drink more beer. Smallest plane I've been on was a Piper, but if, uh, for an Express, it was a C208. C208, nice. Very cool. Okay, WC, thank you. hear the horn going off for 20 uh, our cruise altitude we'll actually have to go set that Beer igloos and the word A. You know, we're, we all live in igloos, eh? Oh, don't you know? Your camera is off? Yes, it is. I'm stretching. Igloos and polar bears as pets, eh? Mohammed, what's up, my friend? Good to see you. How are you? All right, there we go. Flight level 240. Let's bring the props back to 850. And we're looking for about 63, 62 on our torque. Should be good right about there. Cool. Enjoy the views. Have I walked my polar bear yet today? Yes. Confirmed. I'm 
I'm doing well, Mohammed. Thanks for stu uh, thanks for stopping by. Can we see our dog? She's uh, my dog's on the couch today. She's not around, unfortunately. Doesn't want to hang out with us. the stretch today sorbetto sorbetto very tasty One more month and you'll get your one year badge. Nice. So I've uh, yet to take the Q400 out of the hangar. Still need to uh, go back through streams and figure out how to operate it. Two tons. What's up, man? It's, uh, it's a lot of work, dude, but it's extremely um, satisfying to fly, man. Like, really, really satisfying to fly. Wish I was on the wing and then the right center to deploy the chute. What? Why? Let's, uh, we have to plan our VNAV here. So let's go to our VNAV tab. We want to descend at about 1,800 feet per minute as normal. And we'll insert that about 63 miles till our top of descent and or 10 minutes. Perfect. Come jump outside. We'll enjoy some of these views here for a minute or two. Look at that. Gorgeous.
Yeah, I want to take it out some regional FedEx VA operations. Ooh, there you go. Does FedEx fly these? Kind of cool if they did. Lucas, what's up, man? I use Microsoft Flight Simulator and I use X-Plane. I use them both. Matthew, what's up, man? How are you, dude? I didn't realize that was you that asked what the stretch was today. Hey, Cap, glad I could catch a stream. Zeus, what's up, man? Thanks for stopping by today. I appreciate it. Remember, guys, if you're just stopping in now and just saying hello, please don't forget to smash down that thumbs up button. We're trying to get this stream up to 100, uh, sorry, 300 likes. 300 likes on today's stream. Um, a little bit uncertain with what's going on on the weekend as it stands right now. Um, there will be no stream on Saturday or Sunday this week. Uh, I'm working on some top secret stuff that I've signed an NDA that I can't speak to you about quite yet. Hopefully by the end of the weekend, I will be able to uh, showcase and show you what I've been working on and what I've been doing. Uh, but for the, the time now, the plan is that we're not going to have um, a stream this weekend on Saturday and Sunday. Okay, got you. They have... Um, they use ATR 72s with the virtual airline will allow Q400 as a substitute. Got you. Using x right now? Yes, this is x right now. <laughs> Ever considered being a pilot IRL? I think you'd fly. Um, very expensive to become a pilot here in Canada, Falcon. Very, very, very expensive, my friend. Talking like $140,000, $150,000, $160,000. Um, I don't have that kind of money. My family doesn't have that kind of money. Um, yeah. Some may say that's an excuse, but I mean, just being a realist, man. Uh, I, I wasn't really the best kid growing up either. You know, I didn't have the best intentions at 15, 16 years old. I wasn't really concerned about my future at becoming a pilot. I was more concerned about partying and chasing girls and, you know. Daisy told us the secret. Ah, oh, man. Well, cat's out now. Here, bro, guess what happened? Uh, this year coming up soon, Aviation Day at SeaTac Airport next month. May 7th, Alaska Airlines on Saturday. Very cool. Enjoy, man. Why don't I go somewhere to the UK and get trained? Uh, I'm in my mid-30s now. I smoke pot. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of reasons, man. There's a lot of reasons that, you know, I have uh, I have some medical conditions and, and, and not medical conditions, but I have some, uh, some back issues, some very severe back issues, and um, they require me to be on some type of, like, pain management. That's why I, I smoke marijuana. That's why I smoke green weed so instead of i prefer that instead of taking pills and stuff so college programs university uh where you absolutely pay out the ass i mean not even not even air force this was just going into like a local a local flight school and going from off the street to atpl airline transport pilot license um i think it was like 160 something thousand dollars is what i got the when i was you know got the quotes and stuff Hey man, it is what it is, you know. In my opinion, I've done I've done the next best thing, right? In my opinion, um, flight simming and 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 running a YouTube channel on a flight sim YouTube channel at that, this is the best thing, the closest thing that I'll get to being a pilot without actually being a pilot, you know. So um, I am uh, I'm much more uh, yeah. Pain pills are terrible. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's liquid heroin. It's well, heroin if you started up the Captain Canada Hot Tub OnlyFans account, you could get that money no problem. <laughs> yeah, we could. 
Yeah, we could. Huge no floaties to you, my friend. Thank you very much, sir. That was the 100,000 100, special. 100K special. We were going to do the hot tub flight sim stream. <laughs> what are we going to do if we actually hit 100,000 subscribers and this doesn't happen? You guys are going to be real upset with me, aren't you? Sup, Captain? My very big fan. Love North Carolina. Huge fan. Pog champ. God tier fire emoji. <laughs> Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, but no one actually goes uh, to an ATPL. Uh, you get 250 and get a CPL and go fly survey. Or if you're lucky, go directly to a small regional carrier. I mean, sure, that doesn't really work up here, man. It's not, you know, there aren't that many positions up here, at least in Canada. Like, if you're talking about me, like, moving somewhere else to the world, then, yeah, I'm sure there was, you know, I'm sure there's lots of other opportunities out there flying survey in the States and stuff. I actually had a buddy that did that for a while. That's how he gained hours. He got he got hired by a survey company, and he would just fly circles all day long. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's That's not really the dream, is it? Maybe it is to some, but, I mean, who knows? Who knows? I remember him coming. I remember him bitching all the time that it was just, it sucked. But, yeah. Hey, Cap, did you ever uh, tried the approach into Logano? Swiss operates their Dash 8 into there until 2018. Steepest ILS in the world. I have, Herkim. We have. We've never done it in a Dash 8. We've actually done it in, like, jets, crazily enough. But, yes. Yeah, very cool approach. 20 miles to the top of descent, friends. In my opinion, MS-2020 sucks. I prefer x -Bine. Hey, man, that's your opinion. You're allowed to have that, right? Dude, UBU, you, you are one of the kind of a streamer. Great vibe. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Automator. Fly circles and unwind uh, in your retirement. Yeah, I don't know. The pains of streaming on Twitch and trying to upload all of your streams to YouTube. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. What brand vape do I have? Um, what is it? I don't even know. It's a degree vaporesso. And Hops, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. I agree, Echo. 100%, man. 100%. Is there really that loud of a buzz on the Q400? Oh, dude, these things are so loud. <laughs> they are ridiculously loud, man. Yeah. Yeah. Big time loud. 13 miles till descent here, friends. As soon as we see the uh, VNAV start to come alive, we'll go ahead and set up the... Um, there we go. So, um, we can see here that we've got the... On the Grizz 8 arrival. Um, you can see here that we've got Vancouver... Sorry, we've got uh, Egret at 10,000. We've got Vancouver above eight and NACMA above three. So um, let's just take this down to 8,000 initially. Captain Canada, you are this guy, fuzzy, man. wuzzy, red, ah, uh, ginger bear. Smitty said that he will, ah, uh, not be watching you in a, ah, uh, speedo in a hot tub stream. <laughs> and I am having a problem with you, ah, uh, not taking me to, ah, uh, Vancouver. Thanks for that, SMH. Oh, no. <laughs> SMH. Amy's giving me the SMH now. Oh, my Lord. What have we done? All right. Outsell VNAV, 8,000 feet selected. Schmitty, coming in with the $100 donation. Guys, can we please get some love in chat for Mr. Schmitty? Some no floaties and damage Schmitties. What, an, what a character this man is, let me tell you. Huge no floaties to you, Schmitty. Thank you very, very much for your continued support, my friend. I appreciate you. That actually gets you back up on the leaderboard, Mr. Schmitty. Thank you very much, my friend. I appreciate you, dude. That's 200 smackaroons on the month. Guys, please, if you got them in chat, please spam your no floaties and damn it, Schmitties. If you don't have that, you are permitted to spam the goat emoji for the next 30 seconds to one minute. You may spam the goat emoji because Schmitty is the goat of the channel. So, uh, that is the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Schmitty up in there and back up on the leaderboard so if you have any uh any complaints about today's landing you can just direct them to schmitty uh he will be directing all of your uh concerns about any of the landings that you see today <coughs> that's what happens you get up on the leaderboard and you have responsibilities all of a sudden it's not my fault anymore you can't blame first officer daisy all the time we got to blame the flight engineer as well 
Here comes uh, our glide slope friends. We're going to turn our sounds back up here a little bit. And uh, we're going to start to pull our power back actually here. We'll look for about 30%, 25 to 30% on the torque. And there goes the nose. Beautiful. Starting our descent. Yash, how are you, my friend? Good to see you. <laughs> Boomer doesn't fear CC landings. <laughs> You've pretty much you've pretty much seen all my landings by now, Schmitty. You've pretty much seen the hard ones, you've seen the soft ones, you've seen the ones in between. In three years, I think you've seen probably my best of landings, my worst of landings. Man, we had a spicy landing into uh <laughs> what was it, into Atlanta when we flew the 737 900 What did we get the other day? Remember when those winds were just absolutely insane? And we smacked that. What did we get? 270 or 330? Was it a 270, I think? It was a, it was a heavy landing. Heavy, heavy landing. Um, what is the barrel pressure? So weather is 070 at 10 knots, so that's good in Vancouver. We've got showers. The Ryanair butter, yes. Cap, what was your favorite welding process? Um, probably TIG. Probably TIG stainless. Stainless TIG welding. I think that's the prettiest. Definitely the prettiest welding. Stainless TIG, but I did a lot of stainless TIG and a lot of stain, uh, stainless MIG. To be honest with you, like 75% of what I was doing was stainless MIG because they were structural, structural steel supports. So they didn't have to look pretty, they just had to hold strong. So I did a lot of stainless, um, stainless MIG welding. That was like big, big what we were doing. Best part of flying sims, you always walk away from the landing. You got it, Steven. You got it, man. Yes, sir. Worst landings uh, were the initial landings in the Toronto simulator a couple years ago. I blame absolutely. Yes, you have to. Yeah. Hey, Schmitty, can I get an exclamation point weather Ottawa today, please? You should have been... Uh, hopefully this is things to come here, Schmitty, but can I get an exclamation point weather Ottawa today, please? Please and thank you. It doesn't say down there anymore. Mr. Bearded Yeti, good to see you, sir. Hope all is well. Yeti, have you flown this thing? It's, uh, they've definitely fixed the FPS, and it's quite nice. Oof. Look at that weather. 16 degrees today. 61 Fahrenheit. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Schmitty, what's comfortable for you? Like 55? It's almost as hot here as it is in Vegas today. What's like, Schmitty, what's your like ideal comfortable weather? Uh, we need the altimeter was 3018. 3018. Set. Set. Hi. <laughs> I just look over at Daisy's staring at me from the corner. Hi. How are you? What are you doing? Good girl. Do you have a fight? Oh, thank you. What do you want? You want a treat? There's no camera today, but... Personally, you love seven, uh, 70 to 80 with low humidity. I mean, that's perfect. That's like the perfect, perfect weather, but one can only dream. I'll take 80 degrees with low humidity and a slight breeze. 
Yes, sir. I can agree with that one. All right, we're in the soup. We need to start bringing our speed back down just a little bit. Uh, what's the temperature? Is there anything that says my temperature outside? <clears throat> Where do I check outside air temperature? I feel like there should be a thing here. Maybe not. Maybe. Okay, well, let's just get them on anyways. Hey, 300 likes. We hit 300 likes? Sweet! Wait, do you have some bikes, don't you? Or are they gone? Sell them. Um, Eric, I'm not sure. I really don't pay attention. We can we can take a look. I'm not sure if they did. Which is easier on stainless, MIG or TIG? Um, it depends. Whatever you're better at. Stainless is pretty forgiving. Stainless really isn't... Um, yeah, stainless is pretty forgiving, man. So whatever you're better at, like I said, like the prettier, the prettier welds are definitely going to be done in TIG. Um, can't, it's not, it's not saying you can't have pretty welds with MIG, but MIG tends to be a lot. Yeah. How's the FPS now? I mean, I've got the FPS down here. We're in the, we're in the fifties usually high forties to fifties. I would compare it right up there with like the, the Zebo and stuff now. Yes, I do one Harley uh, Dynaglide and one Harley Road King, a.k.a. my rocking chair. Hey, nice. Matta, thanks so much for support. Appreciate you coming in with the $5 donation. Thank you, thank you, Matta. I appreciate that. That's very, uh, very kind of you. Hey, Cap Streaming is a tough job, especially in content like Flight Sim to come this far. Working with developer like Thrustmaster is life achievement. You are 100% uh, correct. 100%. I couldn't have said that better myself, Matta. Um, you are 100% correct. It's, it, it's amazing the opportunities that I'm getting right now. Um, I'm forever grateful and I'm, I'm forever going to remember this, you know. So, thank you, Matt. I really do appreciate that. You nailed it on the head with that comment. Um, it doesn't get any better than this, in my opinion. It really doesn't. Um, 109.5. Let's hold our format down and we can go and get our approach course in here. So approach course is going to be 083. So come up here. We'll get our course 083. There we go. Matt, a huge note floaties to you, my friend. Thank you very much for supporting. Um, thank you for those kind words as well. It's extremely kind of you. I really, really do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Lost our speed there a little bit. My apologies, but we can uh, kill these guys. Don't need that on anymore. Um, okay. That's all looking good. Uh, cruise checklist that was all done or descent checklist altimeter is set approach and landing briefing we're expecting at 08 right I've just set in the um, frequencies so that's all good cabin out controls that's all sent next is going to be the approach checklist uh, which we're about to hit so that's good um, and I just need the minimums in here so minimums on the approach are uh, 200 200 on the minimum so we're going to set that here 200 is set. Cool. So we're good. Approach checklist is complete. Our speed looks good. We're holding at like 230 knots. We're descending nicely. We're at 11,500. Um, if I pop this guy back open here, you'll see that we need to be at 10,000 for tat go, and then after tat go, we can start the descent. So that's good. Do you think X-Plane 12 will be better than Microsoft Flight Simulator? Eric, thank you so much for support, man. I appreciate you, dude. That's extremely kind of you. Um tough question though Eric to be honest with you I, I'm, I actually get asked this question a lot and I think it really depends on what do you classify as better do you think XP12 will be better than MFS do you know what I mean are you talking like visually no I don't think visually it's going to beat Microsoft Flight Simulator um, flight dynamic wise and aircrafts that are going to be available for it maybe maybe they may be better um, but yeah I'm not um, it's 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 a that's a that's a broad question, right? So, it really depends. It really really depends. Um, I think it also depends on like what you're looking for. You know what I mean? Here's the thing, right? Microsoft Flight Simulator right now it's 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 eye candy because we don't have a lot of third party content, right? So 
when you have stuff like PMDG 737 and Phoenix A320 coming and around the line, I think that's what's going to take Microsoft Flight Simulator from um, a, a visually pleasing simulator to an actual quote-unquote simulator where um, we're, we're getting proper flight model, we're getting proper uh, airplane support, we're getting everything in between. So I think Microsoft Flight Simulator is really close from being a a serious, serious contender and I think there's always going to be room for X-Plane in, in, the, in the community as well because X-Plane, like I said, um, one, it's been around for a very long time and two, the flight model on X-Plane is just extremely satisfying. Um, almost everything that you fly, albeit, in my opinion, the flight model using the, the, the GA stuff, the general aviation stuff, I find to be extremely touchy, but that just could be because I don't have my, my joystick sensitivity set correctly, so... Yeah, I don't know, man. It, it depends. Shaq, what's up, dude? Good to see you, man. Just here to touch my toes. My bad. Any yokes out there with force feedback? There are. Yes. Check out Brunner. Bruner. B-R-U-N-N-E-R, I believe it is. Shaq, my man. Seven months. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's the Thrustmaster, man. <laughs> Huge no floaties to you, man. Thanks for the love, sir. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. Mr. Mopar Dude, how are you, sir? Good to see you back as well. I hope how you are having a great Saturday evening. Sa Why did I say Saturday? It's not even close to Saturday. This is what happens when I try and multitask. My brain... <laughs> this is my brain on stretching. Happy Thursday, because it's not Saturday, and I knew it wasn't Saturday. I know that it's Thursday. 1,200 for the Bruner? E uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mopar, good to see you, man. Happy Thursday. And I hope you're having a great Thursday. <laughs> the weekend is almost here, my friend. Almost here. Emergency guy, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. <laughs> Can we just call it Saturday? Yeah, we'll just pretend it's Saturday, right? Just... Mopar, pack up your shit, man. It's Saturday. We're going home. Let's go. <laughs> it's party on board. These stretches got cap already on Saturday. <laughs> what's up, dude? <laughs> Have there been any updates to the Q400 since January because that was the last patch they posted in their Discord? Um, honestly, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Yeti. I, I hadn't flown it in about three months, two to three months, and I was about four versions out. Um, so I really don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> Dan Barry, happy Saturday. <laughs> You've been drinking the ab fuel again? Yeah, sorry. So sorry. Yeah. <laughs> if it's a consolation, it is my Saturday. See, there you go. I'm sure it's somebody's Saturday out there, right? <laughs> right, 1903? There you go. All right, 250 knots, 10,000 feet. We're looking good. Let's start continuing our checklist here. Lights, as required. We'll get those guys on. Um, GPS landing flap should be 15, which it is set to 15. Wonderful. Um... Fuel transfer is off. Tank ox pump one and two and standby hydraulic pressure and PTU control on. So tank ox pump one and two, uh, standby hydraulic pressure and PTU control all to the on position. Um, that's good. Passenger signs are on. Yes, caution and warning lights have been checked. Cabin is secure. Approach checklist is complete. Looking good, friends. We're looking good. Flying a Fokker 50 from uh, Air Antwerp. Nice. Enjoy. Are the Fokkers still flying? All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take this down to 5,000 feet. I'm going to go to vertical speed. And I'm going to send the aircraft at about 1,600 feet per minute. As we need to be above 8,000 at the Vancouver VOR which we're about to be at right now, and we're going to make the left turn out, and then we can descend. There's the left turn out from the Vancouver VOR.
No ATC today? Not really, Shane. We had some uh, ground ATC, I think, but yeah. Hey Cap, where'd you get the Q400? Uh, Cameron, you can put exclamation point aircraft in chat, my friend. That will provide you the link directly to it. All right. If we open up our charts here, we can see... Um, what do we need to be at Booble? I think we need Booble at like 4,000 max. Probably closer to three. So let's get 4,000 in for now. Actually, you know what? Let's just not mess around and we'll get 3,000 in. Speed looks good. We're at 6,700. The airport should be right there. Yeah, there's our airport. It's definitely something to do with the downtown Vancouver because I don't know what it is. There's something that was just hauling ass over there that's causing weird, weird performance. Does the Q400 have auto throttle? It does not pierce. Um, but what I can say, Pierce, is you really don't touch the throttles all that much. Um, the only time you really do is like when you're descending. That's when like you really start to play with the throttles. You start bringing them back, pushing them forward. Um, but it kind of like it's weird. Like it, as long as you're following the instructions with like, especially with your like condition levers. So right now our condition levers are at 850. Uh, which is like the lowest you would be like in flight prop RPM um, As long as you follow that like if you put them back to 850 when you're at cruise You can pretty much leave the engines and they it, the airplane will never overspeed itself It's Vancouver that's leggy eh? I think so yeah, I believe so All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna go heading mode also gonna watch my speed here It's coming up creeping up a little bit on me I'm gonna go heading mode. I'm gonna bring you over here like this. This is all gonna happen extremely quick, so bear with me here, friends. Um, we're gonna flip this Ute down here like that. Thank you. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip you over to heading mode. We're gonna flip our nav source over to ILS one. You can see now we're just coming up onto the glide slope. I actually don't think that's real. It might be. I'm gonna shallow us out now. 500 feet per minute will bring some power back in airplane remains about 225 knots 230 knots that's perfectly fine all right and what we'll do is let's go ahead and make a right turn so it's coming back up on the glide slope which it shouldn't but that's fine um so let's make a right turn 90 degrees it's basically going to put us almost directly north a little 355 for now. There's the glide slope that I want to see now that it's falling away. That actually makes sense. Okay. So that's good. Speed's looking good at 230. Beautiful turns. Looking swell. Hey man, uh, back from work, YVR looking rough, how are you? Michael, good to see you my friend. Uh, yeah it is, rainy day, rainy ugly day here today. Rainy ugly day. Alright, let's put ourselves on a 45 intercept here, put ourselves at 045 on the heading, that will be good. And then what I'll do is I will arm our approach switch. That is wonderful, you see that we've got loke in white and glide slope in white, which is perfect, it's exactly what we want, speed's looking great. We're holding it about 225 knots all as well. And uh, we'll set up our approach speed today. It's going to be about 134 knots. 134. Remember, guys, all we're looking for here is under 200 feet per minute. If we are under 200 feet per minute, it's it's a great day. Great flying day. Our first landing, what was it, 174, 176? Something like that. 
we fly Air Antwerp sometime in the future. Uh, probably not if they're, they've ceased flying. Probably not, unfortunately. But never say never. Never say never. All right, let's start bringing the power back now. We're looking for about 190 knots. We're sitting at about 12 and a half miles out. Should see the airport, which we do, and the rain. I hate rainy days? Yes. I hope it rains now and they get a bunch of rain and it doesn't rain anymore. All right, speed's looking good. Bringing it back to 190. Any plans on doing a flight with the IXEG? Um, I don't know when the last time we did an IXEG flight was, but I didn't have any plans, no. We'll probably revisit it sooner than later, but yeah. It's an interesting airplane as well. Very interesting airplane to fly. The flight model on that one is something that takes, like, you know, a good couple flights, probably even more than a good couple flights to fully understand. Um, okay. All is well. We're looking good. I mean, it's just going to be flaps and gear. So we're nine and a half out. Let's get our first flap of position five degrees. Here comes the glide slope. Can bring down the gear here once we're closer to about eight mile final. Can you try auto landing? Uh, not in this airplane. I don't believe that this one can do it. It might, but I don't think this airplane auto lands. All right, glide slope is captured. We're looking good. Here comes eight miles. We'll get the gear down and we'll get a little bit better configured. Let's bring our props all the way forward to 1020. Good. And we'll drop the gear. 2500. Thank you. Look for about 170 on the speed till about six miles. Actually, we're just going to get configured now. Perfectly fine. Let's go flaps five degrees. Sorry, 10 degrees on the flaps. And we'll come down here. Landing. Good condition levers. Bleed air one and two as min and flight attendants have been notified. Bleed air over to min. Good. We're looking for final approach speed today. Like I said, it's going to be about 134 knots is what we're looking for. Let's go flaps 15 degrees, which will be our landing flaps today. We're through 160 knots. That is good. Start bringing in back the power now. For about 134 on the approach. The sound's in all the way up. It's going to be loud, but enjoy. Those lights, landing lights. All right, landing checklist. We are complete on that. Flaps are set as well. Beautiful. Next is going to be after landing. We'll put him up there, get him ready to go. Cool. Let's do this, friends. Hopefully you enjoy the arrival, and I'll catch you guys down on the ground. Enjoy. Gonna try and get my speed set up here a little bit better using the autopilot. There we go. All right, that should be good right about there. Cool, my airplane. Enjoy the arrival, guys. Landing checklist, gears down three green, flaps full. Uh, sorry, flaps 15 degrees, spoilers set. Cabin crews advised, you guys are advised. Rainy day here in Vancouver. Let's put this bad boy down. We've got quite a long taxi as well. Um, gonna get the taxi charts opened. Quite a long taxi all the way around to the international side. Default scenery? No. And we're traffic jazz 651 short final 08 right to 500. 500.
50, 40, 30, 20, 10. taxi we're gonna take hotel and then a ride on Juliet this video spamming the float emoji hey now it was 11 seconds I mean 10 seconds right on the nose but it's perfectly allowable Fifty-seven minutes on the flight time. Fops, uh, tank ox pumps one and two are coming off. Yaw dampers coming off. Um, flight to taxi anti-collision light red. Pedo statics off. Windshield heat off. Window heat off. 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 Ice protection, main bus tie on, APU on as well. Go upstairs, main bus tie, good. APU power on. All right, sweet. It was over 10 seconds. It was 10 seconds and four milliseconds. I don't want to hear any complaints. No complaints, not allowed. Great landing, great flight. 57 minutes. You want to complain this trip was not the best. Um, yeah. 1-800... Said butt on the landing and it happened. It was a nice like 81 too. Smooth. Right, we're gonna make a right on Juliet here. Let's go ahead and spool the APU. Sir, join real pilot, you don't need any training, you're the best. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that, man. I wish it did. I really wish it did. Contact the HR office for some complaints. Exactly. Yes, sir. Remember, guys, if you haven't done so, don't forget to smash down that thumbs up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the stream. Doing some Air Canada jazz hops today. Short hops, but long. Long day of flying just because, the you know, the Q400 in itself. Um, it takes a little bit to fly this airplane, so that's for sure. Just start your own airline. No rules. <laughs> oh, man. You guys. You going to do another flight? No, that's it. That's it for today, Cameron. That is it for today, my friend. Just got chicken pox. Well, we've all had chicken pox. It does suck. Go get some ointment, some cream. Cover your body. It'll feel good. 
long day of flying. Well, I meant like I meant like the fl the flying is only 230 miles apart from one another, but I mean the stream's already over three and a half hours. Um, very short distances is what I meant. I probably worded that. You know how I am with wording, Schmitty, sometimes. Absolutely terrible. Um, yeah, what I meant was very short distances, but a long day of, uh, you know, getting the airplane prepped and stuff and following checklists. And this airplane is definitely a handful, and I hope I was able to showcase that today. But I also hope I was able to showcase that while it is a handful, um, it is quite fun to fly, and it's also very manageable to fly. All you have to do is follow the checklists, follow the checklists, and, um, you know, get some practice in it. And you'll be good to go. Have you flown any real aircraft? No. No. I have not. Medicine is to be blamed? No. Medicine cannot be blamed. Speaking of which, when I order my medicine, that's where it gets processed, right over there. The Canada Post. The big old Canada Post building at YVR. My my beautiful medicine from Vancouver when it comes here. That's where it departs from. Do they, do they own their own planes anymore? Does Canada Post own any planes? Or do they just do, um... Like, do they just ship it on FedEx or, like, other carriers and stuff? What do you smoke, the chill ones or the sativa? Indica or sativa? A little bit of both. I like hybrids, to be honest with you. Hybrids are my favorite. So when they cross like an indica and a sativa or something. Love those prop sounds? Oh, they're awesome, David. Absolutely awesome. Especially when you bring it back like in a full beta prop and then full out of it. Delicious. Almost there, guys. I know it's a long taxi. Apologize. We can actually feather one of the engines. They do this quite often. They do this quite often where they'll feather one engine. Ah, there you go, Spitty. Okay, that makes sense. Ah, uh, this is the airport I'll be going to. Yeah, 12 cut it is. It is, it is, my friend. Number one is getting shut down. Sorry, number two is getting shut down. God, that's so sexy. Why don't you get a PPL and fly rentals? You can uh, vlog that as well. I mean, it's definitely... You're not wrong. It's not out of the question, man. We'll see what the future holds. taxi oh my goodness we're almost there we got to go to the international side of things though so uh Shabidi and i looked at spending a night here in the um in the fairmont guess how much it is for a room for a room facing the airport like this for plane spotting guess how much they want it was like 330 plus tax a night <laughs> a night at the fairmont so, i mean it's nice it's a really nice hotel. They were they were nice, but not at like three hundred and something dollars plus tax a night. No way, dude. 
gross. Gross, man. A night. Sheesh. Like, it would be cool. Don't get me wrong. It'd be badass to get a corner here and be able to watch planes all day, all night, you know? But not at that price, dude. That's just insanity, man. That's just insanity. We have a friend's park brakes coming on. Beautiful. It's feather number one. Good. Overhead APU gens on. That's all looking good. You have to feather it for 30 seconds, but we'll pretend that was 30 seconds. Engine number one is off. Red anti-collision light is off as well. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Down. Into Vancouver. Welcome back to Vancouver, I should say. Um, there we have it. Absolutely beautiful. Great day of flying. Fun day of flying, actually. We've got the jetway to attach. Don't ask me uh, what I'm spending for a night at the Hilton at KRD for the runway view room. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Beautiful. We made it friends. Fast unload. There we go. The airplane is unloaded. What a beautiful flight that was, my amigos. Absolutely beautiful. Let's go ahead and toggle replay mode. We'll back the sucker up. We'll take a look at that arrival into Vancouver. Uh, eight right. Boy, that was a long taxi. That was almost a 10-minute taxi. Almost like we're skippel. If I'm paying 300 bucks a night for a basic hotel room, there better be some in-call service included. <laughs> a couple sky waitresses would ease the wallet pain. <laughs> yes, it would. Yes, it would, my friend. Huge no floaties to you, dude. Thank you very much for support, C2. <laughs> this guy, man. Uh, spot on donations. You're not wrong. My wife wouldn't tell me how much the runway featuring with JFK TWA Hotel was for my birthday. Oh, man. Boy, that's loud, but nice. All right, let's see. How do we do? Nice flare. Nice flare. Oh, baby. What a landing, my friends. <laughs> A little bit of wind, a little bit of rain, holding that center line. Oh, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous, my friends. Does it get any better than that? What a buttery, smooth butterino. Made sure we held it to make sure we get that, uh, that beautiful flare. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Love flying this airplane, man. It's a lot of fun. A handful of... Definitely a handful, but just a lot of fun to fly, man. A lot of fun to fly. That's the difference right there, keeping the power in and not releasing the power. See how it kind of just like, on the first one, we kind of planted it because I started cutting the power back a little bit. This one, I kept the power in, and you can see it just it, it coast in so beautifully. It just gets nice and smooth. Well, everybody, that is going to go ahead and wrap up today's live stream. Again, if you haven't done so, please don't forget to smash down that thumbs up button. If you haven't done so as well, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Fresh x 11, fresh Microsoft Flight Simulator content weekly, weekly. I'm going to take, take this time now to thank all my mods, my donators, my sponsors. Without you guys here, none of this is possible, seriously. So thank you all very, very much for everything that you guys do for the channel. You guys are absolutely awesome. You're the backbone. You guys allow me to do this and continue to do this. So thank you all very, very much. And for that, I am forever grateful. So thank you guys so, so, so much for the support. Really do appreciate it. Huge shout out to Schmitty today. Coming in with that fat $100 donation, guys. Let's get some love. No floaties. 
Damn it, Schmitty is in goats in chat for Mr. Schmitty. Thank you again, Schmitty, for the support. And to everybody else who came in with the support today. A lot of love for the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed flying the Q400. I know it's not the most popular airplane. I know that it's very different from what we usually fly, but um, I hope we did a good job. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope uh, some of you guys learned a little bit of something today, just like I always do flying this bad boy. Um, so, friends, like I mentioned, I'm not quite sure. As it stands right now, there's going to be no live stream on Saturday and Sunday. I apologize. Obviously, not what I want but there's going to be no live stream on Saturday or Sunday of this week. I will be busy. Um, unfortunately, I cannot say what I will be doing, but I promise you that it's for the good of the channel and it is for the better of the channel. That's as much as I will say. Um, I will keep you guys informed. If you're not in the Discord, join the Discord. I will probably make a YouTube comment or something and post it up there. So, um, guys, thank you so much for supporting the channel. To everybody else who can't afford to donate using a monetary value, I want to thank you guys just as much for supporting the channel. Without you guys here, None of this is possible. So seriously, thank you all so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. I hope everybody has a great rest of the week, a great weekend. And hopefully by Monday, I'll be able to come hang out with you guys back live. And uh, we can uh, we can see what I've been working on and what I've been doing behind the scenes. So everybody have yourselves a great weekend. Have yourselves a great rest of the week. And I'll catch you guys as soon as I can. Happy landings, my friends. Peace.